course. Welcome to Nimmin Live, the number one place on the internet to learn about YouTube, network with other content creators, and have an awesome time doing it. My name is Nick, and today I'm answering your YouTube questions. It's not just me. I'm joined today by my brother from the same mother, D. D. What's up, man? What is going on, everybody? Hope you've had an again. awesome week. We are back again. Indeed. The Nimmin's ride again. Yep, indeed. Okay. Yep. Indeed. Yeah, we're going to be answering your YouTube questions today. So if this is your first time in the stream, if you're hanging out waiting for us to get started, um, I do want to let you know that there is a form that is linked down in the description of the uh, stream right now. So if you have a question, go ahead and get your question in there now. And if you do, it'll get answered on the stream today 100%. So um, um, in addition to that, I do want to let everybody know that today's stream is brought to you by TubeBuddy, which is the number one tool for YouTube content creators. TubeBuddy will help you optimize your videos for discovery. It'll help you test your thumbnails to make sure that the thumbnails that you're making are effective for the people that you're trying to reach. In addition to that, um, YouTube, I'm sure you've probably seen the news. If not, we're going to be talking about it as well. But YouTube is putting out some A-B testing options as well. Big but, news. But one of the things that TubeBuddy is different there, because some people are saying in the comments of that video that that's going to be a big hit for TubeBuddy. But one thing that is different is with YouTube, if you you are somebody that is, you know, taking a strategic approach in terms of trying to get your videos to show up and search for sustainability and things like that. Then in that particular case, um, TubeBuddy actually shows you which thumbs are performing in the best places on YouTube or the specific pages of YouTube, I should say, not the best places. Um, so, uh, so make sure you keep that in mind. But TubeBuddy has over 90 different tools that will help you um, with your YouTube channel. So you can try that for yourself 84. at TubeBuddy.com or uh, slash Nimmin. Or, of course, I'm going to link to that in the description. And in addition to that, we are co-brought to you by StreamYard, which is the live streaming platform that we use to stream this every Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern. And the reason we use StreamYard is because it's easy. Just call it what it is. It's easy. It's reliable. It makes it easy to bring guests on. It makes it easy to add graphics to the screen. You can play background music. Um, and it works as a great backup in the event that your internet goes down or you have some type of tech issue with your computer. It holds your stream open in the cloud. So if you have a problem that's technical on your computer side, then you don't have to lose everybody that's hanging out and start your stream all over again and go through that process. It just keeps everybody there. And then you can just come back in from your mobile device while you're getting everything fired back up, which is pretty awesome. But you can try that for yourself at StreamYard.com. Of course, I'm going to link to that down in the description as well as a bunch of other helpful things for you as a content creator so make sure that you check out the description as well and uh yeah i think we're ready to get into the questions d did you yeah, have a good week uh, yeah i've had a great week you got me covered up here yeah so i refuse to speak until you want to oh that's right that's right yep 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 i guess so, i need to make a different panel there or yeah. a, a new yeah i need to make a we could do like i need to make shape. one of these but yeah. for that just or going across just, the bottom you could just do like a d shape yeah and i could just sit still yeah yeah, so Good. fun fact, though, even though, you know, we've live streamed a bajillion times between the two of us. At least. Yeah, uh, we still have technical difficulties. And while mm -hmm. he was speaking and I didn't get to showcase the wonderful StreamYard mug that's sitting here in front of us, uh, I was fixing. Uh, hey, so they're having, the they're having trouble right now. So basically, um, we're having technical difficulties. What is so it? So they're having a problem between what they're seeing and what they're hearing. Um, he says the audio is trash um, right now. Everything's out of sync as one person. Um, and then somebody said it's fixed and then it's bad again. So I wonder if this is happening um, from... It could be a YouTube issue. Yeah, possibly. Um, oh, and the mic is breaking up, too. Oh, this is great. I wonder if it's because we we're over there fiddling with it with the headphones. Uh, it shouldn't be. We're, our our signal is about the same. So it's better with this view, she said. Um, so the wide view, I guess it goes okay. Okay, it's synced up for... Okay, everything's fine now. So we're good. So yeah, it might have just been a sync issue with uh, with YouTube. Oh, okay. you know what? Yep, I think. So we're good. Yep, yeah, we're good. it could have just been YouTube doing like YouTube stuff. Sure, 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 sure. Um, so anyway, welcome to the stream today. Hope that everybody's excited to uh, to learn about YouTube and you know learn everything about YouTube. If you are watching this on the replay, it's probably too late. You've probably left already from all the stuff that we just went through. But if you are still here, I do want to let you know that we add timestamps here to the stream. So um, if you are watching this on the replay, make sure you hit those timestamps, look around for questions that might matter the most to you, um, and you know just hop right to that question and get the information from that um, but I encourage you to sit back and listen to all of it because you might learn a lot from questions that other people have asked that you might want to know the answer to but you never really thought to ask the um, the question itself so make sure you check out everything and I uh, hope everybody's doing great shark scrapper what's going on man nice to see you in here genealogy with Amy Johnson Crow nice to see you here as well scrap and palette man hope you are doing great Jerry Papandria nice to see you here as well tease hot mess history hope that you're doing great learn Spanish world nice to see you also Christina Smallhorn in the Christina house. Smallhorn in the house what is going on Christina you, did you know Christina has a uh, a course for real estate agents 
Yeah, it's like a YouTube course for real estate agents. That's fantastic. Yeah, so if you're a real estate agent, um, make sure you follow Christina Smallhorn because she has a, a, a course where they actually, because she's a real estate agent too, um, but they actually have a course for YouTube content creators as well. So make sure that you uh, that you follow her for that. Um, and yeah. Okay, got, so we're going to go ahead and get into the questions. I got then. one question before we start answering YouTube questions. Okay, so a question it? before the questions. This is good. So this is like a pre-question this question. This is a pre-question, and it doesn't involve YouTube. This is like a personal question. Okay. How many people, show of hands, are watching Silo? Show of hands. Show of hands. You can put a hand up <laughs> yeah, in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Put a little, how many people is watching Silo? We, we, we've been talking about Silo. Super pumped about Silo. Totally has nothing to do with YouTube, but that's how I wanted to roll. Yeah, I wanted it's to good. Start it's good. Yeah, Silo. yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm watching it. Love it. Absolutely love Silo. I think I think it's interesting. I, I didn't expect a lot when I when I initially like clicked into it because yeah. I thought you know just conceptually I was like right, yeah this right, is right. kind of weird yeah but man am I hooked. It's a good oh storytelling. Oh my gosh yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, incredible yeah. love right. it absolutely. Moving love on it. YouTube Let's yeah it's go. on Netflix or no it's on Apple uh, Apple TV yeah. Um, yeah Silo is the uh, is the name of it. it's pretty yep. good. Let's roll. So uh, the very first question that we have here on our list to get us into the YouTube stuff we've got um K Skis is our very first question. Um, man I'm so used to not hearing myself that having this thing in my ear. It's so just weird. like super weird. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's so funny because I'm used to just like raw dogging. So raw, raw dogging the audio. Yeah. I can't believe so, you just said so, that so, on your own so, stream. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's just uh, you know, it's just a little bit uh, uh, awkward. But anyway, it says um, how is it that I can come up with more ideas for videos so that that way I don't have to fall back on previous ideas? Um, because I've noticed more popular YouTubers do this as well, where they basically take the same video that they did but just change the who or what the video is about. So when it comes to uh, video ideas. Um, a great place to look for that is Google Trends around your topic, looking in YouTube search around your topic, and looking on places like Answer the Public for your topic. In addition to that, YouTube also has a research tab now that you'll find inside of your analytics. And in that research tab, they show you things that your audience specifically is looking for. And they also show you content gaps, which basically means that these are things that people are looking for, but there's not a lot of content on it. So that might be a, you know, a good thing to fill. But when it comes to those sorts of things you have the the uh, jerry says we're all talking merch inbound <laughs> you know what but i'm going to protest that <laughs> what the merch <laughs> all right but uh uh, uh yeah what was i going to say oh yeah but for the uh for the video ideas so so one thing that you can do when i mention youtube search is um you can go up just to the search bar and when you go up to the search bar one of the things that happen there is as soon as you start typing in the topic of what it is that you talk about, then YouTube is going to auto suggest other things that people look for. So what you can do there is let's say that in your case, you do gaming content. Um, I'm not sure what games you play, but let's say for example, you did Fortnite. Well, in that particular case, um, Fortnite, is would be the very first root thing that you would put in there and you would hit Fortnite and then hit the space bar and then YouTube's going to show you a bunch of stuff people are looking for. That does not mean that you have to optimize your video for search or, you know, for that particular term, but it does mean that people are looking for that, right? So if you make something that a lot of people are looking for, then, you know, it can increase your chances of, you know, just getting that exposure because it's showing if more people are looking for it, that demonstrates that more people are actually interested in that topic, right? That's the idea. Um, but using YouTube search for that is great. And when you're doing that, you could do Fortnite space A, and then it's going to show you a bunch of stuff there, Fortnite space B, and it's going to show you a bunch of stuff there. And you can just keep stacking onto that and get creative with how you're actually looking for things. And that can, like, if you sit down and you do that for an hour, you'll end up with more video ideas. And this yeah. is for every niche pretty yeah. much in here. You'll end up with so many video ideas that you'll never want for another video idea again, because you'll have, you know, uh, enough to just keep you going for, you know, for your time here on YouTube. Yeah, weird thing happens. Once once you wrap your head around the idea of how to come up with ideas, mm -hmm. then you're going to find ideas everywhere. You, like, yeah. like it, it's a hurdle. And once you get over that single hurdle, then the then YouTube ideas are no, like that's no longer an issue, right? Like ever again. And even other things too, like yeah. um, you know, like when you are on YouTube's homepage and you're just on YouTube as a viewer, you're going to see a lot of stuff being recommended to you. And all you got to do is think to yourself, like, hey, um, you know, these videos that I like that I'm clicking on, is there any way that I could, you know, introduce that type of concept to what it is that I'm doing for my viewers, but related around my type of content? You know, those types of things. Right. Um, it can get you really far on, uh, you know, on coming up with video ideas. And when you see other people doing something in another niche, then it's like, okay, well, if it's working there, it could possibly work for what I'm doing. So let me, you know, experiment and see if, uh, see if it helps. You got a super chat. So, super chat. Super chat. Amy Johnson Crow says, thank you, Nick, for your support. My channel just hit a million views. <laughs> High five and fist bump to you on your first we million need, views. We need like a. Yeah, oh, yeah I've horn. got the clapping song. Um, I just haven't. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I need, yeah, to, I I need to wrap up the uh, clapping song. Not the whole thing. I can just start it as now everybody's clack, 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 clapping. I actually just did that in my uh, news thing that I did yesterday. Yeah, I don't want to. I just want like an air horn. Yeah. Like, I think our neighbors would love us if we actually got a, Had real, a real air horn. A real they air probably horn. would, or like a bell that we could ring or something yeah. like oh, yeah, that. Like a, yeah, just like a thing yeah. that hangs down. Or right a megaphone, here. and we could just get, move the microphone right. back here and then speak into a megaphone they into decide. the microphone. They decide. <laughs> do we get do we get like a, a, a an audio sound or do we finagle something that hangs from the ceiling like a bell and drops balloons? In and confetti? it's always <laughs> no, it's always right here. I think and boom, I just and I grab it and ring it. Balloons and confetti. <laughs> and we need we need a vote for balloons and confetti. Um, I'm also, not up balloons every Saturday. <laughs> and, and I'm not cleaning up confetti. <laughs> I'm, I'm bell, over here dude. trying to make a mess. I'm just trying to ring a bell, dude. I'm not trying to like be a janitor. Oh, love it, love it, love it. So um, let's see here. So the next question that we have um, on the list here, that was number one. So the uh, next one that we have here is from Channel Ron. Channel Ron says, hey, Nick, thank you for all your hard work. Um, I have a quick question for you. I've made up my mind to step away from Instagram and focus solely on posting content on my YouTube channel in the community tab. I believe concentrating on one platform will be more beneficial. I think it's a good idea, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I'll catch a replay on the replay since I can't catch you live. So Ron, when it comes to, um, you know, going multi-platform, you know, yes, there is power, so to speak, in focusing on one platform when you're getting started because it's just one thing you have to learn and the efforts that you put in, you can just concentrate them on in, in one direction, right? So it makes things a little bit easier there. The downside is by not posting on multiple platforms, you are limiting your potential to reach people who are also interested in your content and possibly growing better followings on the other platforms. Now, keep in mind, you know, like when it comes to TikTok, for example, right, they are doing more long form content now, even though it's vertical. Um, and, you know, it's still me personally, I just don't connect with people on TikTok like I do on YouTube with their content. Like I can watch a YouTube video and I can be like, okay, yeah, you know, this person introduced themselves and they had like the, the video and I can, you know, remember channel names and stuff. But on TikTok, I, I have a hard time with that, but that's me, you know, personally. Um, but, you know, when it comes to putting content across it multiple platforms. Generally speaking, outside of YouTube, people just don't like you. Yeah, it could be. That's no, no, it's, it's me remembering their names, yeah. not their remembering well, No, I'm mine. just letting you know. Oh, you're just giving me a heads up. I'm just giving you a yeah, heads yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah, totally. Just, yeah, like know. in real life. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in the family. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like just, just in general people don't I just like wanted me. you to yeah. go through the rest of the stream with that information. Yeah. <laughs> that's all that's all I'm trying to say. Um, but anyway, the the idea is um, you know, when you are giving yourself that opportunity, you know, you might tap into an audience on, you know, Instagram that just loves your content. Um, and when you just put it on YouTube, then you know that that means that you're limiting, you know, elsewhere. So if you are going to post somewhere else, I would recommend that, you know, you pick a other place. And that if you are doing YouTube shorts, that the only difference is that you just take that short and then you just put it over there when you make them, right? So it's not something you have to be aggressive about. But if you do have content where you can either sample something out or you can take something you're already using on YouTube and just put it over there um, without having to do too much, I think that as somebody that's getting started, I think that would be a, a good move because that just gives you that potential in those other places. However, if you're like, hey, I only care about YouTube. I'm just trying to leverage YouTube. I don't even care about those other things. I'm not really trying to like, you know, blow up all over the internet. I'm just trying to, you know, do well on YouTube and connect with people there. Then in that case, by all means, just go all in on YouTube. I, can I add something to that? Totally, absolutely. Yeah, I think if no. you're- No. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I think if you are, if you have yet to build momentum on YouTube and you're just trying to, you know, you're, stick, you're, you're putting your feet in the water and you're trying to figure out, you know, how do I grow my YouTube channel? I think if you can find the time, if you can repurpose your content, I think you try putting your content on, on other platforms. Try it on Facebook. Try it on Instagram. Try it on TikTok. Try it on other platforms because you don't know where your audience is. And if you're making it anyway. If, right. If you're making yeah. it anyway, I mean, a lot of video editing uh, software and apps now can let you reframe it. So you, mm -hmm. can, you can make your video, then you can reframe it in the app itself or in the software for vertical format. And you can publish it on the other platforms. Like... Because you you don't know where your audience is. Jerry you, just said right here that Facebook paid him more from his reels than Short has so yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember yeah. when reels first came out and they first started paying people. I know there were a lot of people making a ton of money on Facebook early on, like smoking what they were getting paid mm -hmm. on, on on YouTube. Yeah. Um, so you you just never know where your audience is. So I would say right. if you can and you have the time and you can repurpose some of that content, test it for a while and and just see. Yeah, and um, uh, one other thing too, uh, since we are you know talking about YouTube stuff, 
a uh, couple things I just want to bring to everybody's attention really quick, just in case you didn't hit the news yesterday. Um, oh, I actually yeah. put I have a link to it up at the top of the screen, oh, yeah. but um, just so that everybody knows, just in case you didn't watch that um, particular video. So uh, YouTube has let the cat out of the bag. Just as a heads up to everybody that they are going to be um, letting having, cats out of the bag. Yep, that they're going to have. Why do they have cats in the bag? That they're going to have. That's just how they roll. They're going to skin them. Yeah, but th that they have <laughs> uh, A/B testing for thumbnails. Um, so that is going to be coming out to all creators next year. Um, I'm not sure what countries is going to be deployed in first or anything like that, but basically they made the announcement at VidCon that they're going to be putting out um, or that they're going to be adding A-B testing into YouTube. So I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to test this feature, and it's pretty incredible, and it's super easy to use. So how it works, basically, you just have your three thumbnails, and then as you are uploading your video, then what you do is you just you know hit the thumbnail box there, and then it gives you the option to test and compare. And then when that box pops up then you just click on the plus icon and then you add a thumbnail to each spot and then you hit save and then um, and then from there YouTube is going to test different thumbnails against different people so um, this is going to be a, a huge deal for content creators because now you can start working out different strategies for your thumbnails to see what people respond to best so one of the things that I was doing is I would have like um, you know one thumbnail with maybe like a certain message on it maybe a different background things like that and then I would have you know one that I would typically just go with if I was publishing you know the video willy-nilly and then I had one that was just text only to see if there would be a different response and of course you know different videos you know it was a mixed you know response that I got back from that but um, but it was just really insightful there being able to test that in real time and being able to have YouTube do it right because then it's like uh, you know per impression and things like that instead of like waiting you know a certain amount of time Can but it was a pretty you know it's, it's, it's a pretty it's a pretty cool thing and I'm really excited for it can you explain to people who may be new to YouTube or maybe they don't understand the importance of being able to A-B thumbnail test, can you just like briefly explain why that's so powerful? Sure. Yeah. So um, when you just upload one thumbnail and you roll with it, what happens is you are um, uh, you are just pretty much banking everything on that packaging. But when you are uploading multiple thumbnails, either two, you know, if you're using like TubeBuddy, for example, or YouTube's version when that comes out where they're doing three, then what that does is that gives you the ability to, you know, essentially run two different thumbnails against, you know, the people that are seeing your content. And then you get to essentially pick a winner. So what that does is people respond differently to everything that they see, right? We all do. So when you have two different thumbnails, like one thumbnail might grab somebody's attention and help them identify that that content's about something that they care about, you know, in a more efficient way than another thumbnail that you put out. So because of that, you know, doing that testing, um, it just gives you tons of insight into what people, you know, actually respond to. And in some cases, it aligns with what you think they would respond to. But in other cases, you're like, wow, I'm, I'm surprised that's the winner. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it can really, you know, surprise you sometime. Yeah. Um, but another thing as well is when it comes to, you know, doing all these tests, one of the things that you also have to make sure that you're thinking about, even if you're manually, you know, testing your thumbnails, um, you also have to make sure that you're always keeping in mind how the, um, the, the thumbnail um, or the click-through rate leads to watch time on your video because you know one thing that can happen is if you have a super high click through rate but people are abandoning the video quickly because you know it was super sensational on the outside but once they get to the video then it's like you know all like all this is all it is or it's not what i expected and people start leaving that video then it'll hurt the video performance because it's not a satisfactory experience because they're not getting what they expected but when you have that perfect match to where it's like okay this is what people expected they're coming in and they're really enjoying this content they're watching it for a longer period of time you know based on this packaging um, that creates a different expectation for the video then you're more aligning with you know creating an entire satisfactory experience for that particular you know viewer that responds to that so um so it's a it's a it's a amazing tool to be testing you know like you know do it on youtube side do it on TubeBuddy side whatever um or do it manually but um but you know testing your thumbnails just to make sure that what you're doing is you know the most effective for the people you're trying to reach is is definitely a best practice that you want to do but in addition to the thumbnails I didn't ask for all another this. Thing, I was just like, can you just do like a quick another <laughs> another <laughs> thing that they um, that they announced is that they are going to be doing um, wow. um, auto AI um, multi language audio on our videos. Um, this one's going to be a game changer for everybody because what this means is that when you 
upload your video, you're going to be, if you opt in for this, when you upload your video, YouTube or allowed is going to transcribe that video. And then AI is going to read that transcription and then they're going to make it available. So let's say, you know, like with us here in Thailand, if, if one of our videos pops up here and a Thai person goes into that video, then if it's dubbed in Thai, then one, oh, somebody they're, pop, they're, right, <laughs> right. That they're, they're going to, we should just yeah, hire that guy. And have I hire that guy. Yeah. I follow but, him. But, I follow I that guy. Yeah. Oh. But, but, uh, but, but they should, uh, uh, but what's going to happen is they'll see all the metadata translated if you translate that. Um, and then once they click on it, then they're going to get the the audio in their language as well, which is pretty awesome. So then it basically makes your 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 content accessible worldwide for all of the you know dominant languages on the planet. So um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty big deal. And I, I'm really excited for uh, for that one to roll out. In addition super to that, um, and we're going to get into the super chats and all that stuff here in just a minute. But but just a few things I'm trying to bring everybody up to speed on in case you miss the news. And this one here, I actually didn't add to the news yesterday. I recorded it, but it didn't get in there. Um, another thing as well is for the people that have channels. Okay. First, as a YouTube content creator, especially if you're watching my videos, you're going to also start seeing a lot of videos about YouTube automation. YouTube automation is a thing. YouTube automation can work. Um, you know, that kind of stuff, those channels can do well. However, um, I believe that that's kind of what caused YouTube to do what I'm getting ready to tell you. So, um, YouTube also had a policy update that kind of flew under everybody's radar that like nobody talked about anywhere. I might make a video about this just to, you know, get it out there. But one of the things that um, they did is they made it to where if you have a fan account, so let's say for the automation channels where they go and they rip like all the Joe Rogan clips and then they make a bunch of shorts out of those, right? That would be a fan account. So because of that, what they have to do now is they actually have to add the fact that it's a fan account. They have to say the words fan account in the actual channel name so that when somebody's interacting with that content, they know that it's not from the original creator and that it's a fan account instead. Um, so, you know, for the people that do, you know, that animated, you know, or automation type content or that, you know, just essentially steal content and then, you know, put it up as their own. Um, those people um, now have to put the, uh, the the fan account stuff in there. So I just want to make sure that everybody, you know, knew about that because, you know, some people watch the new stuff, other people don't. But, you know, as content creators, I just want to make sure that you're up to date on, uh, you know, on that stuff. Two hours later. So two hours later. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, so really that, quick, I need that sound over here. Yeah, you do. <laughs> So uh, next up, we got a super chat here from Dynasty Trades In. Um, Trades In Five says, uh, "You're my entertainment when mowing the lawn type of stuff." Uh, today, you are playing golf with me today. Oh, that's nice. Hole in one, right here. We're all rooting for the hole in one. Um, says, uh, let's see here. We're doing okay so far. Can you speak to the control I have giving access to my analytics, what I'm able to hide, for example, and where to set it up? Appreciate you. Absolutely. So first off, thank you for the super chat. Um, when it comes to um, the permission settings inside of your YouTube channel, all you have to do is go into your YouTube analytics or not analytics, but you go into your YouTube creator studio and then down in the bottom left hand side of the screen, you're going to see a little settings uh, icon, like a little cog. Um, you click on that and it's going to open up a dialog box. When you have that, um, then you're going to see a little option over on the um, left hand side for permissions. When you click on that permission, um, then it's going to, you know, give you the option to, uh, to, to add permissions to or invite anybody I should say to uh, to your channel to see different things. So I just open it right here so I can literally read out to you all the roles. So you have manager. Um, manager can view everything, manage permissions, go live and create and edit and delete content. An editor can view everything, go live and create and edit content, but cannot manage permissions or delete content where the manager can. Editor limited, it gives you the same permissions as the editor, but you cannot view revenue data. So if you're like, hey, I've got like an assistant going in here, you know, they're, they're helping me out with this stuff, but I don't want them to see the income from the channel, then you would choose that. Um, you have a subtitle editor where they can add, edit, and remove subtitles, but they can't see anything else. That's a pretty cool one, um, actually. They have the viewer where they can view everything, can't create, edit, or delete anything. So if you were to, you know, have somebody that you hired for like consulting, for example, um, then in that particular case, like you would give them that or management. So then that way they'd be able to go in, see your stats, you know, dig into what's happening on your channel and get the information that they need there. Um, and then you have viewer limited, which is the same permission as a viewer, but they cannot uh, view the revenue data. So, um, so hopefully that helps and add some, uh, and add some clarity to that for you as well. We got a super sticker and I got to play that audio. Super sticker. Oh, nice. Now that I can hear it, it's like, oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, so Construction Cronies, thanks for the super sticker, man. Super appreciate it. Uh, reviews with Mayo. Um, welcome to the Niminati. So when you get a chance, go to, um, I'll actually take the uh, link right here. Because actually, no, no, you can go to Nimin VIP. 
Welcome to the Nimenati. You can go to nimenvip.com and that'll redirect you to the Facebook group. Um, just make sure that you fill out all the information on the way in because that's how I verify that you are an actual uh, channel member. So just fill that all um, in. And if you can do that, then I can get you in there um, when the stream is complete today. Super chat. Danielle Tube Spanner says, has some hey. bad news about our equestrian channel this week. We made some controversial content about little horses. So it was deponetized. Okay. That one's a stretch. I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, that one's a stretch. I got it. But you know, that, that one's a stretch. I'll be don't, honest. I'll be honest. Don't yeah. put that one in the book, Daniel. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to strike that one out of the book. <laughs> Destiny trades in five says also two weeks ago, um, at the, uh, at the end, uh, uh, Nick said next Super is trapped. destiny trades and D sorry. If it's D, um, cut you off, talked about something. And then you ended the show. It was comical, but it was unfortunate. Oh, so we had your what question happened? queued up, but you derailed me from answering the question. So, and then we ended the stream. So that was like the last question on the list and uh, it was queued up, but you derailed me and they didn't get their question answered. How does it feel to have life not go the way you think it's going to go? <laughs> oh, D. <laughs> uh, so what was the question? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. No, yeah, I'm yeah, just he kidding. Does, he does that with pretty much everything. I'm just so kidding, by the way. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I do apologize for cutting him, for cutting that off. What Danielle was the question? Says, Danielle says tough crowd. Tough yeah, crowd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, seriously, uh, Dynasty Trade. Yeah, you drop, Dynasty if you, Trade five, yeah, if you drop the question apology. in here. Yeah, if you yeah. drop the question in here, we'll uh, we'll get an answer. Yeah, we'll get it right now. Just go yeah, ahead. And sorry ask about it. that. My my sincerest apologies. Yeah. Yep. Shame on you, D. Shame on you. I don't remember so, cutting off a question though. So while we're waiting for that, um, we've got um, Circle H Scuba is uh, is next on our list. Circle H Scuba uploads one time per week or more. They do scuba education and how to content. The goal of the channel is to bring scuba dri uh, driving, scuba, scuba diving. Yeah, like let's talk about that sub. Yeah, for a let's, yeah let's not. So uh, bring scuba diving to more people, supplement um, an eventual retirement for my day job, and uh, to do scuba and YouTube full time. So the question is, uh, I put a video posted six weeks ago recently went viral for me with 19,000 views, and I've gone from 500 subs to 883 cents. Congratulations on that. Way to go. Uh, since it was posted. What analytic from this video should I focus on most to try to replicate and analyze its success? Uh, most videos prior to this got a few hundred to maybe a thousand views. So what you want to do is, yes, go into your analytics, look at your click-through rate and all the different traffic sources compared to impressions. So you can just get an idea of what that performance looks like. Mm -hmm. Look at your audience retention reports at different report, or, uh, your, your retention at different, you know, um, uh, uh, places in that cycle. So for example, look at it like, you know, right, right after publish, look at it about a week later, you know, all that. Um, and the idea with that is just trying to get an idea of what performance looks like. So for example, if you look in and you're like, okay, a lot of the traffic from this video came from suggested videos, then in that case, looking to see like, okay, um, you know, a week after this was published, how many impressions that I have coming from suggested and what was my click through rate there. And that just gives you like a general idea of what to shoot for. And it helps you just identify when you're, when you're tracking low. Right. Um, and then from there, go and actually analyze the content itself. So of course you have your audience retention reports where you're going to go in there and you're going to look and you're going to look for any places where people fell off that might have caused that video to do better if they didn't. Um, but you're going to look for that and just look for those types of problem areas. So you want to look for dips. You want to look for anything that's spiking up that that's that shows you that people either rewinded uh, into that spot or that showed that somebody, you know, shared it somewhere and that was the entry point in that spot, those sorts of things. Um, in addition to that, you want to look and just confirm that the traffic did come from YouTube because it could have gotten picked up by a website or you could be getting traffic from Google or something like that. So just making sure that, you know, you understand where the views actually came from. And then from there, go into the video itself. And instead of looking at it from an analytical lens, because you know, you've know you already got those steps out of the way at this point, go in and look at it and say, okay, how did I start this video? What was I showing on screen? What did I say that might have you know caused somebody to be a little bit more interested in this video compared to my other videos? Um, and just, just go through each section of the video and try to you know think to yourself like why do i think somebody would have responded best to this and do i think it was this like do i think this part right here is the thing that actually you know connected deeply with people um or do i think this is something that they might have just kind of you know breezed by and kept watching and then maybe this next part was something that connected with them right so just going in and just really analyzing the video itself and just trying to come up with theories on why you think people might have stayed in the video um and why you know it, it mattered to the people that you know came in and enjoyed it and then from there testing your theories on future content. Like for example, if you're like, okay, in this video, normally I start the video and I'm showing a bunch of B-roll and I've got music playing while I've got like a voiceover going. Well, in this video, um, I 
started the video with me on camera. And, you know, I went from me on camera, I was on camera for a little bit of time, and then I jumped into, you know, some B-roll, and then I came back on camera. Um, if you did something that was a little bit out of the ordinary, then you want to say, okay, well, this is one thing that I've done different here that I haven't done in my other videos, so let me see, uh, you know, if that's the thing, and then you test that on, you know, future content that you're going to publish and see if, you know, that's one of the things that kind of, you know, grab people there. Um, in addition to that, look at how you set up your story if you're doing any type of storytelling and just look and kind of track that with your audience retention reports as well to look for any places in your story that might have also, you know, kept people engaged versus having them tune out, you know, as you're going through the process. So um, you want to start looking at all of those particular things. Super chat. Next. iPhone Chris, thank you so much. iPhone Chris, thank you for the uh, super sticker there. I appreciate oh, it. Super sticker, did yep, I hit it wrong? hitting wrong buttons over there. There we go. Super sticker. Boom, boom, boom. King CMC uh, TV says, uh, says they do gaming content. Um, the goal of the channel is to get 1,000 subs. The question is, I just got into the YouTube Partner Program using memberships um, and super stickers. I haven't used it yet, but how does it work or how can you use it? And how should I tell my viewers about it without seeming pushy for them to be a member or to use the super sticker? So when it comes to people, um, you know, giving super chats, super stickers, joining your membership, things like that, um, uh, a lot of that is what they're getting in return, right? So if you have like an entertainment channel and you are just showing people a good time, you're, you're that person that helps them escape, right? They're, they have their day that they go through and then they watch your content and that's the relief for them. They laugh, they have a good time, you know, they go on your journeys with you, whatever. Then in that particular case, um, you know, that's the value that they get out of you and somebody, some people will, you know, um, give you those things just because they, you know, appreciate that value. Um, in some cases, it's also things, you know, content dependent where you are doing something in exchange. So for example, you know, like with us, I have like a Facebook group and if people go into that Facebook group, we, we stream into there sometimes. And in addition to that, like if somebody has questions, they can tag me in there and I can go in there and answer those questions. So there's that sort of thing as well, right? So then there's like a direct exchange in that particular case versus it just being like a, you know, one directional, you know, thing. Um, and then there's also, um, where like, let's say for example, you know, on the super chat side, sometimes people, you know, just like I was saying before, they'll super chat because of the value, but in other cases you can actually do things. So for example, back in the day when we used to do channel reviews here on the stream, um, we would just get super chats lined up because people wanted their channels looked at. So that was a, a service essentially that we were offering. And in order to get to the front of that service, then the super chat would go in. And when people gave that super chat, then that put them in the queue for the channel reviews. So because of that, you know, it was a great way to generate super chats, but the downside of that that we found was that it also stacked on an extra three hours worth of time into the live stream where we had to sit there and go through all the channels of all the people that, you know, did that. So, um, so, you know, th there was, you know, a uh, uh, logistics issue or a time um, issue involved with that. So the idea is you just have to think like, you know, what is it that I have that I can offer? So in your case, since you have a gaming channel, um, one of the very first things I would think would be to, um, like if somebody sends you a, a super sticker, or I'm sorry, like a super chat. Hey, did you plug in the Mac by any chance? Because it keeps dimming. Oh, I'll get it right now. Okay. Um, one of the one of the things that uh, you might offer, since you're a gamer, is you might offer for people to, to play the game with you, right? So it's like, you know, hey, if you are a channel member, then, you know, we have a, a get together every Friday and, you know, we all play, you know, this particular game. Um, you know, we just go in as a team and, you know, we, you know, we fight whoever it is that you're fighting in that particular game or you do whatever it is that you're one of the game. Those types of things um, can be, you know, advantageous there. Um, once you start getting, you know, like a like a big following, if you don't, oh yeah, if the goal is to get a thousand subscribers, you don't have it yet. But once you get like a large following, then in that particular case, um, you know, you can start changing some of that stuff up to where it's like, you know, hey, you know, here we we uh, play together. But then here, you know, like I have, you know, like this particular tier. And if somebody's playing during this particular schedule, they can actually ping me and then I'll come and join their team. You know, just like little things like that um, in terms of an exchange of, of value there. Got it. You good? Good. Thank you. Um, next up on our list here, we've got um, Bearded Iron. What's going on, Bearded Iron? Hope you're doing great. Okay. Says they do fitness content. Um, the goal of the channel is to help busy dads and or men in their 30s onward uh, lose the dad bod. It's says, very specific. I love that. That is, yeah. Yep. Says, hey, Nick, great content as always. I'm um, still trying to recover my channel after an earlier viral video has lost momentum. It's pretty discouraging when your channel is getting like 5,000 views a day and drops to around 200. My last few views uh, videos are getting all green ticks, which means good compared to my last videos, but still die off around three or four days. How do I keep a video growing after the initial few days? All green ticks would indicate I'm going in the right direction compared to my other videos, but not really seeing uh, not really seeing my videos doing better. So 
um, when, what those green ticks are is they are compared to like the last videos that you published, right? 10 videos, right? Yeah, the last 10 videos. 10 so, videos. so if you, let's say for example, um, you have, um, you know, 10 videos that you published and all of them did poorly, then it's pretty easy to raise, you know, to go through the ranks of those. So me personally, like, I, th I think it's good when people share like a, 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 like an image on Twitter or something or like, Hey, you know, I got number one, you know, in, in, in like these last two, like that can be good if the other videos were good too, but either way it shows progress, which is a win. But you know, in some cases that can also be misleading because it's like, yeah, you're heading in the right direction, but it's still not, you know, great compared to what it is that you normally do in some cases, right? Um, so because of that, like, look at those ticks. It's like, yeah, I'm heading in the right direction, but it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, that those videos are, you know, competitive for the platform um, in comparison to everything else your audience is seeing. So because of that, what you want to do is instead of looking at those ticks, go in and look at the rest of the you know information around that video in terms of the impressions that it's getting, it's click through right on the different traffic sources, the watch time that you're generating from the different traffic sources and all that, um, and and look for problem areas that are you know making you a little bit lesser competitive you know for the platform. In some cases, it could come down to how you're packaging your your videos through your thumbnail and title. In other cases, it's what happens you know after people click on the video. Um, but the idea is like you know you are already seeking that improvement. So what I would do in your case, because you have the one video that is, um, you know, that's already done well, is I would go into that video and do the same thing that I recommended a minute ago, where you're in there and just analyzing the heck out of that video, trying to get an idea, trying to get an idea of how that, um, so he, he just took a selfie. <laughs> in case you're like, in case you're watching, you're like, in case you're watching, you're like, what just happened? Yeah, D's taking selfies. So the uh, um, the, the idea, though, is to go into the video that has performed well and, you know, do all the analytic stuff, but also just look at the content and be like, you know, why do I think people responded to this better? How did I start this? What did I do, you know, after the first, you know, 10 seconds? What did I do the next 10 seconds? And really start breaking that video down granularly um, to better understand, you know, how people are responding to, you know, to that compared to what it is that they're doing with the new stuff. You also have the comparison tool where you can use the analytical side of it. But if you're getting like 200 views um, on the other videos, then, you know, the, the information you're going to get there isn't going to be that deep in comparison. Um, so that's probably not the best move um, in that particular situation. But just looking at that high performing video and trying to repeat that in some way um, is definitely something that I'd consider um, if you're open for that. I'm making sure that I, oh, and, and, and how do you keep a video growing after the initial few days? Okay, that that was the core of your question. So, you know, remember that when you first publish your videos to YouTube, YouTube is showing them to the people at that initial time of publish that they, the system thinks that are the most likely to enjoy that content at that moment in time. So what's happening in your particular case, um, it would seem is that, you know, when you first publish your videos, you're, you're that core group of people that are likely to be the most interested in your content, they are. But then as it starts going out to, you know, larger groups of people, then that interest starts quickly falling off, which then kind of stalls the video out. So, um, so because of that, it's really going to come down to like you really digging into the content and really trying to get an understanding of the different way that you're doing things in your different videos that people respond to, you know, positively or negatively. So you can adjust accordingly. So grandma, <laughs> grandma UTI, which is uh, something I don't want to think about, asks a question, um, do we have to pay continuously if we join the membership uh, of one of the channel? Oh, no, no. So basically how that works is um, it is a monthly recurring fee. Um, however, you can cancel it at any time. Um, with that, like, you know, I'm not aggressive on like, you know, trying to get people to sign up for the membership. Like, you know, if people do, that's cool. If not, you know, yeah. that's fine too. Um, so I'm not like aggressive for it, but um, you know, I've got tons of free content on my, you know, channel. If you're hesitant, you know, I've got tons of free content on my channel that you can watch and you know, all of that, like we've got, probably hundreds of hours of these live streams over the course of, you know, of, you know, my YouTube journey um, that, that you can watch to get, you know, tons of information there um, as well. It's just the cool thing about the group is that, you know, we have, you know, um, other members in there as well. So like if somebody, you know, one, there's just conversation with other YouTubers, which is great. But then in addition to that, like if somebody is like trying to, you know, fix something or solve a problem or they have an editing issue like Nikki did this week, then in that case, you know, it just kind of, it, it's just a, you know, a, a resource to where people can go to you know get that kind of information so dynasty uh, hey chad what's up man dynasty trade in five did you come back with that question from last week I, I i've been looking in the chat and i don't see anything from you yeah check to see if it was pinned by doug by any chance yeah i'm, I'm looking here yeah it wasn't all right well, i'm gonna refresh too just yeah, to make next sure question? 
So um, next up, we've got You Can Fix It. You Can Fix It says they upload hey. when they have time. They do DIY learning content. Yeah. Um, the goal of the channel is to give people the information to repair their automotive repair rate. And the question is, um, can you go over the bullet points for using a product in a video um, but not have an affiliate with that brand but use the brand in an everyday job? I'm scared to make videos showing the tools I use but would make be for better content if I show them. So first off, you don't have to promote anything as an – go ahead, D. What were you going to say? I, I was just going to say um, I, I would – love for you to type in the chat why you're afraid of showing tools yeah are you are you afraid of uh it could be because they, because they might not know like where you have to mark the sponsorship thing and you know that kind of stuff right but if he's so, just using tools or she's just using tools and you just happen to show the brand that's not a that's not a sponsorship right right it's right. not a paid sponsorship yeah go ahead carry it from there i'm just curious yeah. why why you would be afraid of that yeah, yeah so so what i was going to say is like when you are you know publishing videos you can show you know all the stuff you use and things like that um you know if you're not promoting it as an affiliate then in that particular case it's still perfectly fine to show the tools that you use um it's actually in some cases people find it more genuine when you're not trying to sell them something right so they're like hey you know they're using this tools but then they got like affiliate links i wonder if they like really like these tools or if they're just using them because of the thing right. and you know people you know sometimes get suspicious about that um and then when it comes to the actual companies that you're using their tools in their case that's free advertising for them so you know they don't care but one thing that i would do that's because leverage by the way for yeah. actually like negotiating a deal is the fact that you do show their their tools yeah one that you show their tools but another thing that you can do is when you make those videos um, follow their accounts on on Twitter follow their accounts on LinkedIn if they have like uh, you know anywhere that you can find them that allows tagging um, when you publish those videos that include their tools one thing you can do is you can at them and just let them know hey you know just made this video you know about this you know at you know company uh, tools toolkit or you know including you know these tools or featuring these tools or whatever and that can help you actually get on the, the radar of, um, you know, of some of those companies. And in some cases, in free. some cases, they might, uh, in some cases, they might actually send you a bunch of tools for free um, as well. Now, keep in mind, that's where things start getting complicated, because if they send you the tools for free, then in that case, they are, you know, they are then sponsoring you because they're giving you something in exchange for those mentioned in the mentions in the videos, right? So that's where things can start getting complicated. But when it comes to how you're currently doing it, if you're not selling anything as an affiliate or those tools as an affiliate, you're not doing it, you know, as a sponsorship, you can show, um, you're, you're fine to show you know the tools that you're using yeah and i just want to throw, without risk i just want to throw a little extra on there when, when you get to the point where you are reaching out to these brands or maybe they're reaching out to you to do some paid sponsorships i just want to say that of the people i know who are in the trades who do get sponsors to reach you know to do, do sponsored videos a lot of those tool companies pay a lot of money yeah 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 they've got they they've got money to spend mm-hmm Hey, Brian, hope you're doing awesome, man. Says, hey, Nick, I've done a, a video reviewing a tool and now they've offered me a deal. Um, do I need to go back to my old video and add this to my description? No. So you only need to uh, you only need to do that on the videos moving forward where you are you know reviewing that tool um, on any videos that you have previously before that deal was made those were not part of the deal. So because of that, you don't have to disclose you were just using their tools at that point in time. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> That, I mean, and I understand why they do it, but it's crazy that we have all these complicated things. Like, hey, man, I'm just trying to like make money and like you know share something with my audience, right? And I gotta like put this tag on here and do all this stuff, right. and like there's right. contracts with the brand. Like, it's just I'm just yeah. trying to make a video. Right. I'm, right. I'm just trying to make right. a video. Hey, you guys might like this. They're giving me a little bit of money to to, to present this to you, right? And then here's all of this this stuff. This you extra with. stuff that this goes extra with stuff, it, right? Right. right. So uh, <laughs> Tara and Katrina um, are the uh, next questions here. And the, uh, let's see here, they upload one time per week or more. Uh, the type of channel is Roblox edits and music videos. The goal of the channel is to create videos and expand my brand, also for me to have some fun. And the question is, I've really been struggling with shorts. Um, I used to get a thousand views per short and now it's gone down to like 40 to 100. Any ideas on what I can do to stop this? Love your videos, by the way. Thanks for the kind words. Um, when it comes to shorts, the thing that you're experiencing right now, a lot of content creators are experiencing. So, um, you know, remember that back in, you know, back in the day, I mean, we'll just say a year ago, um, back, 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 in, back a couple of years ago when shorts first started, but back, the back in my day when videos were horizontal <laughs> right when they were normal yeah think about that for a second mm -hmm. there there will exist a generation of people who grew up in the age of vertical video right and they won't know a world where vertical video was wrong right 
That's right. incredible that to is. think about. Yeah, when, you, you, know when you used to look at somebody that shot a vertical video, like, like, come on, get it together. I, I, I think it was my first video or maybe my second video ever on the channel. It was before anybody was doing vertical video. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? Because, and I saw people making vertical videos yeah. on YouTube. And I was like, whatever you do, it was like with tips, right? Yeah. I was like, do not, <laughs> under any circumstance, <laughs> shoot a vertical video. Uh. Boy, that did not age Yeah, well. I guess the any circumstance part should have yes. had like a little that disclaimer. disclaimer <laughs> that now I'm, yeah, do yeah. not, under any circumstance, uh. shoot diagonally. Yeah. Disclaimer. Right. Yeah. Unless a, a new app yeah. shows up. Yeah, right. Know. Unless it becomes the thing. Unless then it becomes do it. the yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, but, but in terms of, uh, you know, that that 1000 short, you know, and then now they're lower. So um, just like Jerry said here, um, you know, things are getting a lot more competitive when it comes to short. So there, there's a bunch of different things that are happening right now. So the very first is that, you know, a little bit um, not too long ago, there wasn't, you know, like everybody wasn't doing shorts, right? Um, because it was new. Some people were afraid of it. Some were people, some people were afraid to put it on their channel. So then they would have like new channels for it and all this stuff. But through yeah. the evolution of it, now it's become more mainstream. Stream. So since it's become more mainstream, a lot more people are, are adding shorts to the channels that they already have. A lot more people are starting shorts channels because it's easier to get traffic there, those sorts of things. So because of that, the amount of competition in shorts is, is much more. So since it's much more, the viewer experience that people are having in shorts, the bar it keeps raising because they have so much inventory now in YouTube shorts that you have a lot more competition that you, that you used to have. So because of that, you know, if that's where you're at in terms of the views that you're getting there, then, you know, just like the rest of us, when we end up in those situations, we have to, you know, up our game um, in terms of, you know, our quality of content and maybe be a little bit more strategic when you're putting it together um, in order to, you know, in order to get the higher view counts. Because, you know, the, the, the days are getting fewer and fewer of being able to, you know, upload something that isn't that competitive really, but, you know, it's still getting views just because it's there, right? So, um, so because of that, you know, I would just work on, you know, your hooks because of course with anything, Thing. It doesn't matter if it's a blog post, a, a long form YouTube video, a live stream, um, or a YouTube short or a TikTok video, whatever, like, you know, how the content starts is always going to be a determining factor on how long, you know, how much more people are going to keep watching it. So just make sure you're spending a lot of time just really being intentional and thinking about the hooks of your shorts, because, you know, that will be, you know, one of the big defining factors if people are going to stick around or not. So Don Juan in the chat says, and this was on a follow up to the, uh, the tool trades, they say, how much do these companies pay for sponsorships? I'm in the green industry trades. Here's what I want you to do. Uh, when this stream is over, you can write this down. Go follow a YouTube channel called Creator Wizard. Hmm. Uh, Justin Moore is his name. Yes. He's also very active on Twitter. Yeah, He's really good at walking uh, creators through mm -hmm. how to negotiate brand deals and what to ask for and that sort of thing. Yeah. Let, let, let. But but in terms of the answer there, if you are a channel that that gets you know a, like a let's say you get like you know ten to twenty thousand views for video, then you're going to get you know a decent amount of money. Um, if you're getting like a hundred thousand plus for video, then you start getting into like real like you know like crazy money um, at that point. If you get into millions of views, if you're that type of channel, then you get into like a video can retire you you know after a short amount of yeah. time. Type Some of thing. people are making a lot a yeah. lot of money with that. Southwest Barrel says I took a video, I took a vertical video of practice and it has over 5 million views and I get 50,000 views a day on it. Nice. O only video I've ever shot in vertical. Wish I could replicate it. Nice. Isn't nice. Isn't it weird nice. how Love that it. sometimes it lightning is. strikes and you cannot explain why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Trying to Learn Bikes um, is our next channel. They upload, uh, they do bi-weekly content. Um, they've been making videos for one year or more. Hey, one more thing also I want to um, let everybody know. Um, first off, if you're just joining the stream, we're talking about all things related to YouTube. Um, so basically this entire thing is a Q&A. So we're just answering questions as they come in and the questions that we ask or, or that we answer are all problems that YouTubers are trying to solve. Um, so, you know, there's gonna be something in here for you. Um, the second thing I want to remind everybody of, just in case you didn't see it in the news yesterday, is um, Vid Summit in October um, 3rd through 5th. Um, that's going to be coming up and um, I'm going to be speaking at Vid Summit. So if you are going to be in the Dallas, Texas area or if you can get to the Dallas, Texas area during that time, um, a lot of uh, like myself and, and some of the other help channels are going to be speaking there, but like Mr. Beast and Ryan Trahan and uh, Zach King and like, you know, like those types of creators are going to be there as well, just sharing everything it is that they know. Um, a lot of people, you know, make massive changes after they come back from Vid Summit. So if you are somebody that is interested um, in that, then uh, make sure you go to vidsummit.com to, um, to check out the information on, on that. 
So motorcycle maintenance um, is the type of channel that they have here for trying to learn bikes. And the goal of the channel is to help others confidently perform DIY maintenance on their motorcycle. Also, I want to learn how to make videos good enough. That adds. Thank you in advance um, for your excellent answers. So uh, when it comes to the ads that you choose to show on your videos, um, for premium users, it doesn't even matter, right? So for premium users, they're gonna come in and it's gonna be fine. Um, the only problem with non-skippable ads is that every now and then YouTube will stack up a couple and oh, things man. like that, or it can be a really long ad and it can kind of frustrate people on the way in. However, um, YouTube also has kind of like an ad tolerance, which doesn't make sense when you think about them stacking videos together, um, you know, as an ad, but they have an ad tolerance, which basically means that if somebody sees a video like now, then there's going to be a certain amount of time before YouTube is going to show, or if they see an ad now, there's going to be a certain amount of time before YouTube shows them another ad. So because of that, just because you have a non-skippable ad at the beginning of your video, that does not mean that every single person coming into your video is going to see that non-skippable ad. Some of them will get skippable. Some of them will get non-skippable. Some people won't even see an ad. Uh, if they're in premium or not, they won't see an ad. So uh, because of that, just as a heads up, you know, the skippable and non-skippables are the most lucrative ad formats out there. So if your channel is 100% uh, reliant on ads as your monetization method, then in that case, enable both of them. Um, and anybody that is, you know, uh, you know, has a problem with that, then they're just going to have to, you know, move on, so to speak, because that's your your primary, you know, uh, form of monetization. Yeah. And I want to say, like, from a, a consumer point of view, and, and I'm not paid to, to say this in any way, shape or form, but I think YouTube premium is hands down the best monthly recurring bill that I have. Yeah. Of all the things that I have, and that's including like Netflix, Apple TV, um, unless it's Disney uh, and there's like a new Star Wars thing going on, then I'll say it's Disney. Otherwise, it's YouTube premium. Consuming content on YouTube without ads showing ever is amazing. And I don't know how people consume YouTube with ads. I just don't understand how, how that's even possible. There was someone, um, it was like a, a stream or two ago, maybe maybe a little bit more than that, but there was somebody that actually mentioned that. And they're like, yeah, I didn't really think about it. And then they went and they got premium and they were like, oh my gosh, D, like, you know, totally. That's like the best the best purchase I've made. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and again, you know, I'm, I'm not paid to say that. Right, like people right. Always, I've been, I, I've actually gotten comments. Being called I, a shill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're showing free. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Like, right. Consuming YouTube content without ads popping up all the time is it's a game changer. Yeah, it's totally different. It's totally different. One, like you can just put on like a like background music. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, just put on some some chill. You know, here's a six hour chill background thing. No ads. Mm -hmm. Or like you can just turn it on and like you can listen to like a podcast video right. and like go do something and clean the house or whatever. And there's no annoying ads. That pop. Right. It's just a game changer. Man. It is. It, it's money well spent if you can fit it into your budget. Yeah, I think it comes down to thinking like, is my time worth that? Right. Right. So it's like I, if you, like if, if you for me are it's a focus killer. Right. It, it, like it's just whoa. What what is that? What is that? Attention yeah. killer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like that's I, true yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for me, it's more about like, you know, what I, okay, so over the course, like if I spend like, you know, 40 minutes on YouTube, if I see, you know, a few ads that are, you know, like two minutes long or so, I mean, technically I can skip them, you know, quickly unless it's an unskippable, right. but like, you know, does, does would it make sense out of all the time that I use YouTube over the course of the month to just, you know, spend that few bucks to, you know, to yeah, avoid yeah. that? Yeah, and I understand that's not going to be in everybody's budget, but, totally, but totally. like I would, I would get rid of Netflix before I got rid of YouTube. Yeah, yeah, totally. And that's legit. Uh, Renee Rich is in the house. YouTube's creator lazy. Hey, Renee. Hope you're doing awesome, man. Hope you had a good time at uh, at Vid Summit. Happy Saturday from VidCon, Nick and yep. D. Hope you or like VidCon. Our new, VidCon. VidCon. Sorry, VidCon. Like, hope you like our new AI dubbing and thumbnail A-B testing. And we were talking yeah. about that yeah, earlier, we were man. Just talking about that. Yeah. You were late. That would have been great to have you in talking about that then. <laughs> How was VidCon this year? Hey, did, so, did YouTube come back to sponsor VidCon? Or yes. Did, they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yep. That was weird last year with TikTok uh, sponsoring. Yeah. It makes, it makes things awkward. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is awkward. Yeah. This is awkward. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. Yeah. Who are yeah. these folks? Who are these? So, uh, um, Jabari's fitness channels, our next question here. Um, they have a fitness channel, and the goal of the channel is to hit a thousand subscribers, hopefully get one million and open a gym. Love it. Wow. Big picture right there. Picture love it. Stuff. Love it. Love it. Um, are my thumbnails good? What should I do to get a thousand subscribers? How to get noticed on YouTube? So um, I'm not going to look at your thumbnails, but um, but the thing that you want to focus on in your thumbnails okay. is making sure that you are. I'll look at your thumbnails, but I'm not looking at those. What do you right? Think? Yeah, beautiful, freshly manicured. One to ten. Yeah, um, I would say maybe like a two and a half. If one's good, is, is one good or is ten good? Ten, okay, one from a scale of sand. No, from a scale of a train wreck. Okay. 
to Angelina Jolie's thumbnails. What, what do you got? I've never seen her thumbnails. Can, can you only, give me another reference? I can only imagine they're amazing. Okay. Um, then in that case, I would say so. So um, I would say halfway between the train wreck and Angelina Jolie. That's not bad. I'll take yeah. that. Yeah. Maybe maybe even a little bit more towards Angelina Jolie. They, they're nice. They got a good pot, like a nice it's, sheen it's a, it, on them. They're, they're they're clean around the edges. I'm all that good stuff. I'm proud of the buff. I'm proud of the buff. You don't. You're not like heavy on the cuticle no, side no, 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 either. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, they look good. No, 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 no. They look good. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's see here. So next question that we have is um let's see here it says um todd Bopre and i broke down the multi-format algorithm for you all hope that you get to see it soon all oh, looking forward to that definitely looking forward to that when that comes out yeah i'll watch that for sure hey roberto blake's in the house roberto blake what's up man hope you're doing great he says um youtube premium pays better um let the uh pays better uh let the viewer than uh than adsense yeah that's something too so, a lot of people think okay well if somebody's watching with ads or with uh premium i don't get paid that's not true yeah you, you definitely you, do you get paid um, but yeah, on Jabari's fitness channel, they say, oh, my thumbnail's good. Um, what should I do to get 1,000 subscribers? Not going to get noticed on YouTube. So um, I'd like to actually challenge the way that you're thinking about that. So, oh, you know, currently, you're <laughs> D's like, well, here goes 20 minutes. Here, yeah, I'm going to go, 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 go get a pizza. I'll be back. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go get a manicure. <laughs> right. Funny story. Trying and, to get that tin, right? Yeah. Trying to get that Angelina yeah, Jolie. This is, this is the truth. I'm not exaggerating here. Mm -hmm. So they were like in a really big building. Yeah. Th th this, this unit here is in a really big building. Mm -hmm. And on or in this building is a nail shop. Mm. It's like a, a place to get manicures. Is that still open down there? It's still open, oh, okay. and wow. I still get manicures down there. Nice. So it, the last time I went in there to get a manicure, mm -hmm. and this is really dangerous. So I, I think they don't. We're 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 in Thailand. So I I, I there ha, I'm going to guess that like in maybe U.S. and Europe and stuff like that, they probably have some sort of air filtration system to get rid of that mm -hmm. terrible toxic smell mm -hmm. from all the paint and everything. Yeah. I got buzzed getting my mail my nails done. Holy moly! Yeah, and I and I, I told the gotta go down and get my nails done after the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah nail party. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I told her I, I was trying to explain that it's like you know unhealthy to be in here Just with kidding. all these chemicals and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I walked out of there and I was like, You're like woo. Yeah, yeah I, I got like, a little woo. bit more than my nails yeah. done there. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. yeah. So I got my nails done and I got a buzz. So and probably killed some brain cells in the process. So 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 a couple things here. Um, like I said, I um, I'd like to just kind of reframe because you say, what should I do to get a thousand subscribers? Um, and how can you get noticed on YouTube? So um, I'd like to in, instead of thinking like, okay, how can I how can I get a thousand subscribers? Instead, start thinking of like, how can I add value to a thousand people? Right. Um, that's one way to start thinking of it because then it kind of changes it from like, what, what, what am I getting here? Um, and I want them to do this for me versus like, okay, how can I, how can I make something just amazing or helpful or interesting or, you know, um, funny or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, cause you're doing fitness. So, you know, how, how can I put videos together? that will transform the way that people think about fitness, that will make them uh, be like, wow, this is like the greatest channel ever and want to subscribe. Or how can I, you know, um, educate them on fitness in a way that will make them better understand fitness versus all the, you know, information that you have out there to where maybe it's just like, hey, they're just telling me exactly what I need to know without all the details. Or maybe they're telling me all of the details and not just the things that I need to know because I would like to be more informed, right? So, um, you know, instead of thinking like, you know, how do I get a thousand subscribers? think how can I add value to a thousand people and make the best content possible for those 1000 people. And another thing is instead of thinking of the thousand subscribers, also think to yourself, how can I create a long term sustainable YouTube channel? Because you know, you don't want a thousand subscribers, you want 100,000 subscribers, you know, a million subscribers, right? You want people to watch your content. And you want people to enjoy that content enough that they're going to keep coming back and watching more and more of your content. And that they're going to enjoy it so much that you can get your channel to a million and that you can also open a gym from the resources that you generate from your YouTube channel, right? So because of that, just start thinking more along those lines and by doing that um, and also working on your skill sets because that's like a big elephant in the room thing that you cannot overlook. You have to continually be working on your skill sets in terms of, you know, learning how to write better titles, learning how to make more impactful thumbnails, learning how to make videos that people truly enjoy, not just videos you're trying to trick people through, <laughs> but videos that, that people actually enjoy and get value from if you focus on those things then you'll do great on youtube for a long time to come right but if you're like okay hey just i'm just trying to get that 1000 subscribers i understand you're you know wanting to get into the partner program and stuff like that probably um so you're trying to rush to that part but at the end of the day 
um, you know, if you focus on adding value to people through your content and you're strategic about, you know, the things that you talk about. So for example, since you're doing fitness, I would definitely talk about, you know, broad topic ideas, you know, around fitness, things that, you know, problems everybody's trying to solve, you know, when it comes to fitness, um, so that, you know, your content is more uh, accessible for, you know, more people at that moment in time. But if you focus more on the side of, you know, just adding value to people, then, you know, long term, you're going to win, right? There won't be any stopping you at that point. But if it's just like, how do I get to a thousand subscribers, then you're kind of, you know, putting a little bit of a ceiling on yourself there. Um, when really, you know, if you put out just a handful of good videos, um, and in some cases, it can be one good video, it'll just cruise you right past that 1000 subscriber side. Like there's probably people in the chat here right now that have put out one video that by that by itself, that one video has generated a thousand subscribers, 10,000 subscribers, 20,000 subscribers, um, you know, cause that that's a reality of YouTube. If, if you're focused on value, people are, are interacting, you know, positively with your content and having that good experience, like, you know, people will, you know, subscribe to um, subscribe to your content. So next up on our list here, um, we've got, Um, let's see here. Squared Phoenix. Squared Phoenix says that they upload every other day. Um, it's also a gaming channel. How many gamers do we have in here? If you're a gamer, just say me. Um, but they uh, want to become an authority in the gaming niche. And the question is, hey, guys, um, I'm actively working on improving my speaking ability on the mic. When you both started out, did you just figure it out as you as you went naturally? Or did you follow any guides or do any formal training? And if you did, could you recommend any courses, videos, etc.? So I still mess up. I still use a lot of filler words, things like that. When I'm trying to be mindful of it, and I'm really focusing on not using as many filler words, one thing I try to do is I try to breathe. And instead of saying the filler word, or instead of saying um or ah, but sometimes if I'm just trying to explain an idea, I get focused on trying to explain that idea and then I'll, I'll just lose track, right? I'll lose that focus on trying to not say those things and I'll end up still getting them in there. So, you know, it, it's a continual thing and, and you, you might be able to fix all of that faster. Uh, for me, I still run into periods of time to where I'm an obsessive uh, um sayer and like sayer and you know sayer right so uh so yeah i would just work on i would just work on those things but on the breathing side that's a great way if you can start being mindful of where your brain says the um or whatever other word that you like to throw in there just taking a breath through your nose is a great way to kind of combat that but you have to make sure that you're being mindful of it in order to be able to kind of take over when your brain's trying to make you say those other words uh but one thing that can be helpful is meditation in terms of just practicing being mindful. Um, and that can help you in a bunch of different ways. So that can help you in terms of how you're communicating. That can help you on just being mi more mindful in your environment. That can help you in being more mindful of, of things that are going on with your body in terms of how you're feeling. So for example, with me, meditation taught me that I have this weird thing that I do with my legs to where I just tense my legs up from time to time. And it was just out of nowhere and I never noticed it in my entire life until I started meditating. And then because of meditation, now when that happens, I almost instantly, I'm like, oh, don't it. And then I can just, you know, mentally just relax, you know, relax my leg in that point. So uh, meditation can also be helpful in, in that regard too. Not in a woo-woo kind of way, but just in more of a helping you have more focus on whatever it is that you're trying to focus on kind of way. Next up on the list, when I mention meditation, some people get like woo-woo about that. Uh, treasure hunting detectors, what's going on? Hope you're doing great. Welcome to the stream today. So next up we have... Saturn. Saturn says they upload every other day. The type of channel is Discord and anime content. The goal of the channel is to share happiness and good vibes all around the world. Putting out them good vibes. Love it. And the question is, how can I grow my channel if it's an anime channel? So you grow an anime channel like you do with every other type of channel. The idea is you make sure that you're putting out content that anime people would enjoy. You would make thumbnails that anime people would be able to identify and make it clear that it's anime content, right? In addition to that, you have the titles or the whole concept of the video is about something interesting about anime. And then within the title itself, it's something that is either informational 
or super compelling or a mix of the two um, in order to you know help pull them into the actual video content and then on the growing the channel side that's just one side of it right getting, getting people to click on it but then you have the other side of like okay if people click on this what do they do next which is they watch and interact with the content so if they're watching and interacting with the content then in that particular case you have to learn how to keep people watching for a longer period of time because if you can get people to have a great viewer experience from the moment they see your content on a home page or recommended next to another video or in YouTube search or wherever it pops up then in that case if you can just create a great experience for them then your videos will do well on YouTube because you're giving YouTube exactly what they want by giving the viewers exactly what it is that they want that create a satisfactory experience for them so focus on those things another thing that I would consider is if you are doing anime content I would also be doing shorts right now as well because that type of thing is really easy to identify like if the whole thing is anime and you're doing like voiceovers under it or something like that, then in that case, even if it shows up in a, a, like the little short shelf on like a home page, that can still pull in anime people if the if the content of it is anime. So I would definitely be using shorts for that. Hey, by the way, I want to wish a happy belated birthday to Roberto Blake. Yeah, yeah, Roberto Blake just had a birthday. I, yeah, yeah. I, I forgot. Happy birthday, I, Roberto. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw that uh, this morning actually. Mm -hmm. I yeah, like, I sent oh, him a Facebook message the other, uh, like a few days ago. Yeah, I just saw that this morning. I was like, oh, I hope he comes into the stream. Mm -hmm. Happy mm -hmm. birthday. So we yeah. sing, uh, I guess we can't sing the official happy birthday song, but happy, happy, happy birthday, Roberto Blake. Yeah. Hey, happy. if you want to do that song, uh, I'll do the video if you want to do the song. If you just want to strip the audio, then I'll go through the painful side of uh, putting the video on top of the audio. Which one? Um, the the Nimenati birthday song. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to pull it off another drive. Oh, okay, I've got it in Dropbox. Um, no, all, I've got I, all the videos for that on no, no, Dropbox no, I can send you. Oh, you've already got it. I've got it all put together. Oh, okay. okay. I, I okay, have perfect. to pull it off the drive and then auto-tune it. Oh, okay. To pitch, to pitch the thing. Got it. And okay. Then, yeah. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Online private practice is the uh, next channel here on the list. They upload when they have time. They've been on YouTube for less than a year. And the type of channel is therapist business coaching. And the goal of the channel is to teach and simplify how to market a consulting, a counseling business online. The question, I wanna know which is better, quality or quantity when it comes to video uploads as a way to increase subscribers. I personally script write all my videos in the more specific topic, the longer it takes me to finish. Now, it's taking me about six to eight weeks to finish a script. Once done, oh I record, edit, and upload within a couple of days. I thought about using AI to speed up the process, but I'm not sure if it's worth it. Any thoughts? Try it. Try it. Try it. Yeah, try Six it. Six to eight weeks, and I believe, yeah. is entirely way too long unless unless the videos that you're putting up are getting f just phenomenal viewership. Like yeah. Somebody like Mark Rober, for example, I can't even imagine, or Mr. Beast even, the, you know, the work that goes into that, but they're knocking it out of the park. Yeah. If you're not seeing a lot of results and you're spending six to eight weeks, I would say you need to find a way to, to, to make things more efficient, to make things a yeah, lot totally. more efficient. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been using uh, chat GTP a lot, and they're not the only game in town. But man, AI is just blowing my mm -hmm. mind. It's not yeah, perfect, Tube Spanner, but it's really, really good. Tube Spanner's got a yeah, script writer too, yeah, right? Yeah, Tube Spanner has yeah. a has an AI script writing tool in it, um, and it uses something that they call hold and replace. So basically, it writes out the entire script, and then it holds each individual section of the script. Mm -hmm. So then you can go into one section. You can say, oh, add more to this, or rewrite this particular section, and then it'll do that without having to like rewrite the entire script and give you something completely different. So it really helps you kind of control how your script comes together, which is pretty awesome. So I haven't seen that yet. So essentially yeah, it's cool so essentially let's just say theoretically the way you describe that each paragraph is its own edit uh, own section that can be edited yes and you can tell each paragraph this is too long add to this yes. clarify this mm -hmm. simplify this yep rewrite on a it per paragraph basis yes oh that's fantastic yeah it's awesome that's yeah. super powerful and in addition yeah. to that you have like a structure going across the top of the screen yeah so um it's going across the top and you can see it vertically as well and you can say like you know what this would actually be better up higher a little bit and yeah. you can just take it and just grab it into that spot yeah 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 it's or move it into that spot it's pretty cool mm. but um but when it comes to you know putting your videos together and they're, they're taking you that long i would definitely you know work on efficiency there so in terms of quality and, and quantity so when it comes to quality 
a lot of people think quality is like, you know, camera optics and, you know, how everything sounds and all that. And that's definitely, you know, a, a form of quality. But in reality, when it comes to YouTube, quality is defined by how people respond to your content. Yeah. So, you know, you can have something and you, you can put something up that is technically inaccurate. So what I mean by that is like, let's say that you have a video going up and the color isn't quite right because your white balance is off. Let's say your audio could be a little bit louder or maybe you could be a little bit closer to the microphone, you know, something like that. Well, well, in, in those cases, you know, people will be tolerant of that if they're getting, a, you know, a different type of value out of that to where those things aren't, you know, that important. That's why you see tons of videos on YouTube where you look at them and like technically it's like, you know what, this doesn't look like that great of a video, but man, it's super entertaining. And because of that, you know, they'll get lots of views on them. So, you know, when it comes to quality, it's more about the viewer experience than your camera optics or even how much time you're putting into like writing your script, for example. So the very first thing that I would do in your case, if it's taking you six to eight weeks, is I would just cut whatever video links that you're making. If you're not getting, you know, good results out of them, um, I would cut the the length. Like, let's say you're making like a 10 minute video. Um, I would start cutting that in half just so you can get out, you know, a little bit more. And the reason for that is because like if you have experience already and you already have all of the skills required in order to, you know, publish content that, you know, is likely to have people enjoy, then in that case, it's not, you know, as critical. But if you are just getting started with all this stuff, there's so much to learn that if you're publishing a video every six to eight weeks, then you're not giving yourself that much content to practice with, right? You're just focused on one aspect of it for a really long time. So because of that, I would really recommend that you uh, try to, you know, either shorten the video or, you know, maybe don't be as specific in terms of like, you know, hey, you know, every word needs to be, you know, perfect and all that. Like even take sections and say, you know what, as a, as a speed tip here, this is something that I do. Instead of writing scripts, I do bullet points. Yeah. And then with the bullet points, you know, because in your case, if you're a counselor um, and you're teaching people how to do business online as a counselor, then you probably have experience with that and you probably know it, you know, pretty well. So because of that, I also just encourage you to experiment with just saying like, okay, I'm going to write a script for my hook because that's super important. And then any, any details that are technical in nature that I need to quote numbers or any type of stats or something like that, then of course, you know, or any process that you need to quote, then in that case, I'm going to write that down as part of the script as well. But for the stuff that I really know deeply, um, experiment with writing bullet points for those particular parts to see if that also helps, because then not only will that help you communicate in a more natural way for those parts, instead of reading, you know, the script and then looking at the camera and saying it or reading it off a teleprompter, um, but you're going to communicate in the way that you normally communicate because you're just reading off of the bullet point, right? So you're like, okay, I'm talking about this, so let me just talk about it in the way that I know how to talk about it, right? So you're going to communicate in a more natural way as well. So yeah. I, I just recommend that you um, that you give all of that um, some consideration. Yeah, and also since you're taking so long between uploads, consider making YouTube shorts where you make a 30 second or 45 second short where it's just like one quick tip yeah great idea. right you don't have to break this into some long right. you know drawn out script just do one quick tip right yeah. do a really interesting hook at the beginning that's going to speak directly to the people that you're trying to reach so it's something that's going to stop people from scrolling right stop them from scrolling there you are telling them what you're going to tell them in, in the video and then just give them one specific tip and just bomb those out you know every yeah. you know one or two a week if you can if you can fit yeah. into your schedule yeah, and keep in mind, you know, like in some cases, you know, just to be clear, uh, in some cases when, you know, in some cases it might take, you know, people a while to make videos, but again, like if you're getting a good response off of those videos, then it makes sense to spend that time. But if you're not, that means that you really need to focus on making sure that that you're that you're practicing the thing enough that you're going to be able to improve the skill set over time, uh, you know, as rapidly as possible. And the way that you do that is just by putting out more videos. If it means that you're going to go and, you know, make some shorts, and, you know, to supplement that long form content. Let's say, for example, you might be doing lectures. I don't know. But if you were doing lectures, then in that particular case, then, yeah, it might make sense to do, you know, a longer video. But if you have those shorts to supplement it, then you have that content out there getting in front of new people that will introduce them to you so that when you do publish that longer form content, you already have an audience in place to, you know, to come in and actually enjoy some of that content. Tommy T's Extreme Roller Coasters, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. So next up on our list here, we have uh, Off Time with Lee and On the Road with Lee. 
They do vlog content. The goal is to show life on the road. And the question is, is the Coffee Jam song available for download and including in videos without copyright issues? So currently it is not available on Spotify or any of those places at this moment in time. Um, I'm actually still like learning how to make music sound better. So I'm going through that process right now. Um, and then once I get it to where I'm like, yeah, it sounds, you know, the way that I want it to sound, then I'll put it up on uh, Spotify for, you know, people to download if they uh, want to listen to it. But um, as of right now, it's also not something that people are going to be able to use in their videos. That's just something that I made, you know, just as like, you know, part of the thing yeah. here. So because of that, you know, I'm not making that available. I should, but I'm, but I'm probably not going to uh, making it available one. for others. Yeah. yeah you end up with right. I end up getting my own copyright strike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Careful yeah, with that yeah, one. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, just the, like if I was more confident in YouTube's copyright system, then in that case, I would, you know, I would be more prone to open it up. But because there's just so much, um, you know, incorrect identification going on in the yeah. copyright system, I don't want to make it publicly available. And then somebody ends up using it in their video. And then I use it here in the live stream or in one of my videos. And then I get a copyright claim because of it. Right. So yeah. I'm just trying to avoid that sort of thing. And that's exactly the sort of thing that can happen. Yeah, totally. Content ID. Um, the NICU doc is the next channel here. They do medical education content. The goal of the channel is to do less 24 hour calls in the hospital. <laughs> Love it. Trying to, trying to escape that job. And the question 24 is 24 hours in the hospital. Yeah. Think about okay. that. Okay. Hold on. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, first, let's talk about that for a second. Ooh, hold on. First off, respect to doctors and nurses that do all that stuff. But I want to talk about that for a second. Hold but on. But next, let's talk about like, okay, if you were to just sit and work in front of a computer for 24 hours, I'd, I'd no, like, yeah, face down question, on my keyboard. My question, what kind of shoes do you wear? Tell me what oh, type of yeah. shoes you wear. That keep you going. That keep you going, mostly standing, I'm guessing, and walking around for 24 hours. That's my first question. Yeah. What kind of shoes do you wear? Because then if you're working construction, like, like your shoes matter. Yeah. If you're on your feet all day, totally. right? Like if you're working on a standing desk, you've got a, most people have like a, a cushion or a yeah. pad for your feet mm -hmm. for, right. Anti-fatigue um, mat anti -fatigue, is the technical, yeah. yeah. So what type of anti-fatigue shoes do you wear at the hospital that allow you to keep going for 24 hours? Yeah. Number two, what sort of, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna call them stimulants for the sake of conversation. That could be caffeine, yeah. that could be energy pills, Red sure. Bull, whatever. What, 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 how are you? What gives you wings? What, yes, what <laughs> gives you wings? Uh, and just, yeah, number three, mad respect, man. Yeah. Mad respect for that. Yeah, so like uh, another thing too is like, uh, like what I find interesting is that seems to be, I mean, I'm not, you know, and never have been and never will be in the, in the medicine field, but like one thing that I find is interesting is doctors of all people know the and the people of the well, boards you, of all these hospitals. Let me tell you something they about know doctors. apparently they know nothing what we've learned in the past <laughs> couple of years. Just kidding. <laughs> that's what I read on the internet every day. But <laughs> but like but you would think Just that, kidding. that I love you guys. if anybody knows the importance of sleep, it would be doctors. Right. But right. then the people who are on the Lots. boards of all of these hospitals. The people on the boards of all these hospitals still have the doctors work in these like crazy cycles that are not, you know, beneficial to their sleep schedules. Yeah, it just seems uh, it just seems like it like it's it's a priming for medical malpractice and something. Right. Way. Like, cause I, yeah, I think about what how I am when I've been awake for twenty four hours. Right. Zombie mode. I can barely Total zombie mode. I can barely operate Apple T V. Yeah. Right. So that so then I go in like and they're like, hey, we need to like, you know, your appendix is about to rupture and I've been awake for twenty three hours. Right. Like, let's go. YOLO. Right. Yeah, like, YOLO, go on it. Yeah. Yeah. So right. somebody just mentioned Crocs and I and I do want to say, hold on. I, I wear croc flip flops mm. a lot. These are the, I have plantar fasciitis, as you know, so, yes, right? So I do. My, my arch problem. We're getting back to YouTube stuff here in just a moment. Hang I, tight. I promise these are hands down the most, like I do not get fatigue mm. wearing these things. So there's probably something to be said about Crocs. Mm. If people in the, in the medical field. That they're a Croc? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I can stand a long time on these and, mm. and not get tired. But like my Nike gym shoe, like, man, I get worn out. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's mm. really weird. Next up on the list, we've got Gardening with Bear Brown. Super oh, got super chats oh, Tommy T's roll, uh, Extreme oh, Roller Coasters. Sticker. Thank you for the super sticker. Sorry, super appreciate it. One again. So we, we, got, we got Butterfingers over there. You know what? I can't see that in StreamYard. Can't see what? I can't see if it's a Super Chat or Super Sticker in StreamYard. Oh, Unless yeah. I'm looking at YouTube, I don't... And, and it, they all look the same to me inside of StreamYard. Hmm. StreamYard, get on this. Yep. So, um, so, here, so next up, we've got gardening. Uh, it's a gardening channel, and the um, channel is Gardening with uh, Bear Brown. Gardening with Bear Brown says the goal of the channel is to help people grow food and one day be able to retire and do this full time. 
super cool that you're helping people grow food. Um, just wanted to say that real quick. Um, next is that I want to get people to send pictures of their watermelons at the end of the growing. This is a unique question. I like this. Hold on. Where clerks? might need your might need your brain here, D. All right, let's go. So um, I want to get people to send pictures of their watermelons at the end of the growing season. How do I make sure? How do I make sure I'm not being sent viruses or anything that could take over my channel? I want to make a slide video using the pictures, but I'm nervous. Thanks. Okay. One, have them upload the JPEG images somewhere. Um, so in that particular case, they could upload them. So in the in the description of this live stream right now, where you put your question, the uh, the form right there is a Google form. It's 100% free. It comes with your YouTube account. One thing you can do is set up a completely brand new Google account. And that particular form has the option in there for people to upload things. So what you can do is you can put out the message for people to upload. You can set up the form that says like, you know, um, agree to, uh, you know, letting me use this photo, those types of things. Um, and then have the upload option. So people will be able to upload directly into that. And it's completely separate from your YouTube account. And when they upload just the individual image, if, if it's a zip file or something, then just don't download it. But if they upload an individual image, then Google will actually detect it if it's safe or not um, on the way up there. So, um, so that would be the thing that I would do if I was, if I was trying to get images from people. But one thing to keep in mind, just because somebody sends you an image doesn't mean that they actually took that picture or that they owned that watermelon. So, you know, this is just me being, you know, paranoid because I'm weird about, you know, making sure you're kind of playing by the rules here um, on YouTube because, you know, you put a lot of work into, into doing this. So, you, you know, want to make sure that you're doing it safe. But basically, um, you know, one thing that you do run the risk of with any type of viewer submitted stuff is that they find a really big watermelon photo off of Google Images yeah. or some stock site or something like that, and then they upload that into there, and then you show it in your video, and then somebody that, that is a watermelon farmer that's happens watermelon. to be watching watermelon stuff. He's like, "Wait a minute, that's my yeah, it's my watermelon." My watermelon. And then I you know they those melons. right, and then they you know, and then they you know submit you know some type of you know takedown notice or something like that if they even know to do it, um, or they send you an email or they complain to YouTube or whatever the thing is. Just be mindful that you know that you do open yourself up a little bit for that kind of thing it's probably fine but i just you know i just want to make sure that i do share that with you because i'm a big fan of just you know making sure that you're you know protecting your your, your your channel and that everything's sustainable yeah in terms of virus protection and all of that guess what corgi butt thank you for the super chat super chat in terms of virus protection what i would do in your situation is i would create if you're doing watermelons i'm going to go out on a limb and guess that everybody's on facebook um i would you, I would figure out if they're on Facebook and I would create a Facebook group or some sort of a Facebook page where people can actually give you things through Facebook. They can post them on Facebook and you can right click and save them. Yeah, make a Facebook group. Make Just a make a group and then they can be a part of that. Invite right. everybody over to there. They can right. go in there and then do them there. Yeah, right. Yeah. So they're, and, they, and then allow them to, to publish yeah. content to us. So they, they upload their pictures to Facebook and Facebook, <laughs> Facebook should be able to identify that. Then you can right click that image and actually save it to your hard drive. Mm. That would be the safest way to do it. Another thing you could do, if you have an old laptop that is not being used, you could use that laptop specifically for opening your emails and opening up images and put a virus. You got to um, be careful, though, if it's connected to your internet. So it's best if you do that, yeah. like a coffee shop or something. Yeah, yeah, you, true. you can take it to a coffee shop yeah. and like hook up that way. Yeah, there's a couple different ways to do it. But I know a lot of people are opening their emails and stuff now on, an, on a second laptop in case they open something up and end up with some sort of a virus. The Wholesome Home, thank you for getting us back on track, says D. You derailed the previous question. He did it again. So, um, derailed. what I'm here for. The NICU doc was the question. I just went back to it. Thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, they do medical, medical education. Oh, no, wait. To do the less in the hospital. Oh, okay, here we go. Facebook removes oh, yeah. videos. What? So basically to do less 24-hour calls in the hospital. And then here, um, the question is, is it better to have higher quality edits in a three to five minute video versus just a talking head with minimal edits in a 10 minute video in terms of making money? Yes. It all comes down to how people respond to each, right? So if the video gets a lot more views, then of course it's going to generate more income. It's going to have more you know, ads shown on it. So because of that, if people respond to your content and it's a high quality, you know, it's like a highly edited video and that's what they respond to and you can get people to click then in that particular case that one's you know going to be likely to make you more income whereas if you're really good at your presentation and you can lead people through a story without even needing any edits at all 
to where it's like, hey, I start and then I tell my story and then I shut it off and I can do that in a very clear and concise way, then in that case, as long as people respond to that, then you can have an entire channel where you don't edit your videos at all. So um, because of that, experiment with both, see what people respond to best. If you're doing this you know, for income, then in that case, just experiment with both. And if you wanna edit less, work on the presentation more. Right. And uh, and that will help, you, you know, kind of get through that process faster. You know, when it comes to editing and I'm not taking anything away from editing because it is a struggle to keep people watching your video. Yeah. But I find myself like if I land on something and there's a subject that I want to did, Doug, I, I, there's something I want to learn or someone is just really like you've you've captivated me. Maybe you've captivated me through your personality or your ability to, to storytell. But I've sat through definitely not me. I've sat through videos before that have not even been edited. Yeah, you know, Project Life Mastery. He, he. Um, I don't know if he's still doing that or not. I haven't watched him in a while. But um, there's a YouTube channel called Project Life Mastery where it's all like self uh, self employment stuff, no motivation editing. things like that. No editing. He's got a lot of content where it's like one take. Um, some of them maybe you know there's like you know a couple of quick cuts in there. But um, but he has a lot of content where it's just him and he's just standing there and he's just talking and telling his story and then the video ends and you're like wow that was incredible yeah yeah he's just yeah. a really good storyteller really good at communicating yeah. and um and, and you can just sit there and go right through his content very easily at yeah. least you could i don't know if he's still doing that or not. I, I used to sit through there, i don't know if he's still doing it or not i haven't seen him in a while because i got youtube premium not sponsored for that uh <laughs> well just uh, ty lopez oh yeah yeah. Ty, uh, yeah he's good too ty lopez so he used to run ads all the time yeah so his ads would come on youtube and I would not because I wanted to watch the ads. I wanted to watch to see how long he would go without taking a break mm. because I, I knew how good he could communicate to the camera. Yeah. And he was so good. I, I, I never bought. I'm not interested in what he's selling, but I was interested in him as a communicator and how he could effectively nine out of 10 videos do one take that's like 10, 15 minutes long yeah. and just be flawless. Mm -hmm. Like that's a skill. It is. No editing involved yeah. whatsoever. So That's yeah, good. anyway, yeah, nothing to, I don't, of course, editing matters, but so does communication. Yeah, another thing too, like Roberto said, you know, um, over editing is for entertainment channels, it distracts and waters down education. Yeah. So, you know, it, yeah. it comes down to what you're doing, but Tomato you know, to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like as an example, I took one of the clips from the live stream here and I put that up on my channel recently. Mm -hmm. And in that particular one, I was like, hey, I'm gonna edit this one and I'm gonna just basically have the whole intro of it just where it's like things are changing. It's like every minute, just yeah. kind of see how people respond to that here tanked yeah like like that intro is just like boo like yeah, yeah. people yeah we're, we're heading out of there in that particular uh case yeah, it, to it, to you know to lean on you know roberto's idea there um, yeah it, it, well like you just said try it though try, try it, it. Yeah, like, try like it. you works. never know the only way you're going to know how your audience is going to respond to something is through testing yeah sometimes you're gonna you're gonna hit a home run sometimes you're gonna swing and miss mm -hmm. um but try to you know testings for a while yep. and start looking for patterns and see if you can find something that really connects to your audience because everybody got a different audience yeah i mean it doesn't matter you're all in different niches we're all making different types of content we all communicate differently our pacing is different how we word things some people are excellent storytellers yeah they are and they just start speaking and you're just captivated yep. out of the gate that's not me video for bosses what's going on if you're doing yeah. awesome welcome to the stream today so gardening with bear brown is our next question here um says i want to get okay we did that one already Bear Brown. So next up, uh, we've got Tarot Underground. Tommy, and we don't see any questions. What did you say? Nick he, mentioned my super chat twice, but not answering my questions. Yeah, I don't. I don't see questions in your super chats. Man. I don't see it on YouTube or here. So basically, on my end, I just see the. Yeah, I just see the. Yeah, uh, Tommy. Tommy, I'm going to put this on screen. This is what we see right now. We, I see two super chats that are just empty. Yeah. Here's one. And there's two. So if you have a question, go ahead and, and put them in the chat mm -hmm. and, and we'll answer those. Because yep. it, for whatever you wrote on there, for some reason, it did not come through. Uh, apologies for that. I'll mm -hmm. keep an eye out for it in the chat. So um, while that's coming up, uh, yep. the Tarot Education says they teach people to read tarot cards. Um, and the question is, can you give some live stream ideas where you don't have a lot of people showing up to live streams? I don't have enough people to do a QA and a or other participation heavy streams. So uh, one thing that I recommend that you do, oh yeah, it could be blocked words. Good call, Jerry. Oh. Yeah, good call. Yeah, yeah, look, at that. yeah, look, yeah. At, look at that detective in the house. Yeah, yeah that's good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start sending you messages from time to time when I'm having like tech problems. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah that's you, probably if, what it is. If you have a controversial word or something like that, it could be getting blocked. Yeah, I'm going to go in and look right now. Yeah, yeah um, that, but, that could be it. We're looking. 
But when it comes to the, the live streams, if you don't have a lot of viewers, so what you want to think about there is instead of thinking of it like a live stream where I need participants, think about it like you're making a piece of content live. And by doing that, it changes your, your mental framing when you go into it, um, and it changes how you structure things and all of that. So the idea is that you make the content live so that it's a good piece of content on the replay. So how that works, is, I mean, you watch my content, so if you go and look at my news content, that's what I do there, is, you know, for when I live stream that is, you know, it's a it's a live stream. And even though people are in there, I don't acknowledge the chat. Um, I don't do any of that stuff. I just jump in, give people the news, let them know what they need to know about, you know, things that have, you know, updated or changed on YouTube. And then I'm like, okay, you know, if you're new to YouTube, you know, click here, blah, blah, blah. And then I have my thing that I do at the end. And then as soon as I'm done with that, and it's short, so then as soon as I'm done with that, then I just go in, I add an end screen to it, go in and pin a comment, and then, you know, that's good to go. Maybe in some cases I'll edit off, you know, maybe the beginning if I didn't, you know, come in right on the spot when it went live, that kind of stuff. But I just do some minor tweaks to it there, and then uh, and then it's good to go. So um, when it comes to the live streams, just think, and, and just a heads up, if you go to the StreamYard YouTube channel, we have an entire playlist over there where I discuss your particular problem in depth over there in a lot of the live streams I do over there. But the, the thing when it comes to, to live streaming without an audience is you need to be thinking about the replay because that's where your views are actually going to come from if you don't have people participating. So because of that, the approach is I'm making a piece of content live. So as soon as I go live, as soon as it, I see that light saying that I'm good or the button, whatever, then in that case, um, I need to come in and deliver a hook that lets people know what it is that I'm going to be doing in the content and essentially why they should stay. And then I'm going to start moving into the content. I'm going to try to get through that in an efficient way to where if somebody's watching it on the replay, it actually feels like a piece of video content. And then when it's in, when it's finished or coming to an end, then I recommend another piece of content on my channel for the, the viewer to go and watch. And then uh, and then you end the stream. So that's the that's the idea in terms of you know how you actually want to set that up so that you can get the full advantage on the replay without you know without any live participants at all. Mm. Good question. Next up. Next we've got uh, do, 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 um, us plus dad. They do daily content. They do Roblox, uh, Relepla, challenges and tips. The goal of the channel is to grow an active Roblox community and make some fun money on the side. The question is, we're trying to decide between one Roblox channel or three, one Holy with shorts, cow. one role play, and one challenges. Everyone says one channel, but research, looking at all the large Roblox channels, shows us channels that focus on just one have more views than the ones that do all three. Thoughts? Okay, Boy. so um, with this, so just- I wish there's I a, could zoom in on you why just because something like this it's like oh it's like a serious thing i yeah. just want to be able to like zoom in like 25 percent oh for like a serious <laughs> zoom <laughs> right like i want the serious zoom and have like some type of like slow like sound in the background yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. so uh so when uh when you are thinking of this sort of thing there's a couple things to consider one is for one channel if you are going to be uploading something very specific there in terms of the value that you're providing, if the other type of content also adds a similar va uh, value, then in that particular case, you can deploy different formats, okay? So for example, if you are trying to grow a Roblox community and you're giving people, or and you're doing challenges, giving people tips and role play, then in that particular case, you can do some of that in shorts. You can do some of that in long form as well. I'm not sure if you can do it in live streams because I'm not familiar with that, uh, uh, you know, all the details of that game. But, um, you know, you can do it in both formats as long as it has the same value that people are getting. Or I won't even say the same value. As long as the people that are interacting with the content are your target people that you're trying to get to watch the content. So, for example, you're clearly trying to reach people that are interested in Roblox. So because of that, if your Roblox content, if you're doing like, uh, you know, challenges and tips for those people that are interested in the challenges and tips and watching you go through the process of doing those challenges and or tips, then in that particular case, they won't care if it's a long form video or if it's a short, um, if it's something that, you know, that they enjoy, if you put it together right. So because of that, what I recommend is start with doing everything on the one channel and then from there, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to go into the grouping feature inside of your YouTube analytics. I have a short on my YouTube channel that shows you exactly where to find this, but you go into your grouping and then um, you start grouping the content type together. I mean, YouTube's already just because they're doing so good on their analytics now, they're already going to uh, they're already going to break all of this stuff down for you in terms of, you know, the views coming in from shorts, the retention on shorts, the subscribers driven from shorts and all of that. 
So they're going to give you that information, but you can also get a little bit more granular um, if you start grouping the you know different formats together, and then you'll quickly be able to decide like, hey, this is causing channel growth, this one's causing more engagement. Um, so because of that, you know, we're going to keep doing this or these aren't really performing well here, but they're really loving this stuff. So because of that, let's take this off of this channel, but we still want to do it. So because of that, we're going to do it on another one. So for example, if you're doing role play, um, and again, I'm not familiar with Roblox, so I'm just, I'm just, I'm using the information that you told me here to kind of break these down. But if you're doing role play, if it's common for people that are watching role play videos to also watch the challenges and tips videos, then in that particular case, it's a great fit for the one channel. But if the role play is a different price type of person, Person that would watch you know that compared to people that are just looking for tips on the game then there's going to be some type of disconnect there right so because of that that's where you might want to consider either one I'm making three buckets here that I'm gonna be putting you know these different types of content in. I'm gonna be growing audiences for each one or that's where you're like, you know, maybe I am going to separate this. But the, the first thing I would do is I put it on one channel just so you can, you know, see what, see how the people that YouTube is showing your content uh, responds to it. And the reason for that is because when you when you first start publishing um, to your channel or, you know, like as you're you know deploying all this stuff, one of the things that's going to happen is, you know, you will find one format that will outperform the other formats because all of them can't, you know, outperform each other. Right. So you're going to find one that is dominant. So. If you do not put the all of that onto the one channel, then you're not going to know for that particular channel that, you know, that that one would have been dominant. Right. So because of that, you're just relying on the one format and you're trying to figure out how to get that one format working versus throwing all three on there. And then if people, you know, it just really enjoy one, but not the others, then it shows you like, OK, well, we're going to double down on that. Right. And then that's what we're going to use to grow the channel. So that would be the approach that I would take. Um, let's see here. Next up on the list. Did that question come through, by the way? No, I didn't do anything. You said, um, I'm uh, looking, no I'm weird. looking in streamsy to see if he has it in here. Hold no on. weird words mentioned. Um, and congratulations see. to Liz, uh, Liz Bianco, my design Sherpa says I just reached a thousand subscribers. Nice. Thanks, you. Congratulations, congratulations to you. Held for review. Yeah, I don't see it. I'm looking for Doug. Yeah, I don't Doug, see it either. Yeah, I don't see it either. Nope. Tommy, I, you must be typing because he says it still didn't come up. You must be typing yeah. something that's getting blocked. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, let's see here. So next up on our list here, you know, I'm actually going to look in this list and see if maybe yeah. for some reason it popped up, you know, it's not coming up. So basically we have StreamYard that's pulling this in. We have a secret system that you, that we're not telling anybody about yet. That's also pulling in your super chat and we have YouTube yeah, and none of them pulled in the, um, pulled in the, pulled in the words. Yeah, Tom, you can try posting. Yeah, in try my to chat. run D's. Yeah, yeah, go to go to D's video because he's he's yeah. streaming this too. Go over to D's channel and see if it uh, see if it goes in there. Yeah, and, and like negative five says, um, it. you know, rephrase it um, and try to say it in another way. See if that gets yeah, it through. And, and and I'll say this: if you're mentioning a particular brand, like if you're mentioning a brand, space those letters out yeah. because I know there's some brands that I just I don't support. And I put them in my blacklist. Oh, okay. okay. Just because I was like, you know what? I think that brand might be trash or whatever. Oh, okay. Or, okay. Yeah, I do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it could be a particular brand or whatever. If so, just space out those words and, and rephrase it. Yeah, if you could just type it in the chat, uh, Tommy. Like, uh, you don't have to give another super chat. Just just type it in the chat, and, uh, and, and, and that should be enough. Just type it in there normally. Yeah. Yeah, you can also send it on Twitter, um, you know, if you want to, uh, to D, maybe. So um, let's see here. So next up, we have Her Heel Review. Her Heel Review, um, they upload one time per week or more. They do TV and movie review content. The goal of the channel is building a community of film fans. And the question is, got feedback to niche down on my channel, but I'm struggling to determine how. Should I start a new channel to do this instead? How do I do this if I don't want to limit myself to one genre of film? So uh, let's see here. Her Heel Review... Yeah, so you probably got that recommendation if you are, you know, talking about, you know, like, let's say you have like romance stuff you're talking about, and then you have like sci-fi, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that might enjoy the romance stuff that might not necessarily care about sci-fi and vice versa. So your recommendation that somebody gave you to niche down might be because of that to help you, you know, better, you know, target that. But I'm looking here and you have like, you know, the blackening. I'm not sure what that is. It's a horror comedy. Then you have Transformers and Spider-Man, which, you know, those, you know, um, of course, you know, people that like both of those would probably go together. Um, Little Mermaid and then Not My Peter Pan. Not sure what that is. But, um, uh, you know, like 
the whole idea with niching down is in this particular case, thinking of it through the lens of, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to just talk about as an example, sci-fi. Um, and I'm doing that because I love sci-fi and I'm going to connect with, you know, other sci-fi fans through this content. That's the, that's the beauty of niching down. And, and the win with that is it also increases the probability of people being able to enjoy everything that you publish versus all oh, like, I can just come in and check out, you know, your content from time to time, because most of what you make, isn't what I, you know, what I'm actually into when it comes to the, you know, my movie genres. So that's kind of the idea. Um, and just keep in mind, like you don't, you don't have to do that. It's just when, you know, people take that type of action on their channels, um, it just fine tunes who is interacting with the content, which can then help, you know, the system itself in terms of YouTube also, so better identify, you know, the right people to show your content to consistently as well. So, um, so because of that, I would just consider that. But when it comes to, you know, doing like a completely different channel, the very first thing I would experiment with is I would give yourself like 90 days of just focusing on one type of, of movie genre and just see how it works out. See if it causes any improvement at all. If it doesn't, then in that case, you know, you can go back to how you were going. But if you're like, hey, this is starting to accelerate things and, you know, people are enjoying my uh, people are enjoying my, uh, you know, my 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 content they are clicking on it a lot. I go into my audience retention reports. And they're enjoying it there. Then in that particular case, you know just keep doing the stuff that works in that particular case. And then you can try to sample in some of the content and then see if that, you know, brings it down. And if it does, then in that case, you know, that tells you like, Hey, they're, they're really enjoying this. So I'm going to make sure that I'm doing, you know, more of this. And then that gives you the option to, to where if you wanted to, you could start a new uh, channel for it. But one thing, one thing to keep in mind when it comes to multiple channels is yes, you can hire people for, you know, different things and all that. But um, when it comes to having multiple YouTube channels, it can be, um, you know, challenging to run multiple channels, especially if they require a decent amount of work just in like comments alone um, can be, you know, difficult across channels. So because of that, um, just keep in mind, as soon as you start splitting things up like that, let's say that all of a sudden, you know, both channels start doing well or all three channels start doing well, then you just, you know, kind of settled in for a lot of work, um, you know, on, on all those different channels. I'm not seeing anything from Tommy here. He said, okay, there it is, Tommy. All right, what's he got? Here. He got um, it on your side? It came through? No. He says just, oh, no, 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 somebody else. Okay. So 86th, um, oh, they that, upload one time per week or more. They have a help channel. Yep. He says, I was just asking about subs. So you oh, that's it, why I have the word subs in my in my thing. Yeah, because, yeah. Right, the word subs should be blocked. I'm surprised that got in. Yeah. Um, rephrase that word. Type in, like, what, followers or space Yeah, followers out is subscribe. probably fine. Yeah, yeah or space yeah. out the word I subs. might even have the space out version. Yeah, basically what happens is a lot of people will spam YouTube comments, especially on, you know, our type of content um, with, you know, those types of words because they're trying to use the comment section for followers and stuff like that. Right. Um, so, you know, I have those in my blocked words list, which is probably what's causing them not to show up here. So um, 86 says the goal of the channel is to guide new uh, cooks and aspects of leadership without sugarcoating things. The question is, kitchen folk like me are usually broke, so what's the other ways that I can provide value and do what's passionate for new cooks and be able to leave my current job to move into YouTube full time if my targeted segment doesn't have a lot of disposable income to spend on affiliate links, et cetera? So even though they probably, or even though they might not have a lot of, you know, disposable income to spend on, you know, affiliate things, there are things that they need and that they you know, need to get, you know, from time to time anyway, every industry has that. So, you know, for example, it might be, you know, knife sharpening stuff, or it could be knife sets, or it could be the things that they wear or, you know, whatever. So, you know, there's probably something that they would, you know, need to get on a regular basis. So you can at least, you know, promote those types of things. And then if not, then going from there into, um, uh, uh, you know, leaning more on ad revenue as the primary source of income for that would be the thing. And also if you can try to come up with something, like if you have any type of courses, cause I know you're like training, uh, uh, cooks and things like that. So even though people might not have a lot of money to, to spend, if you made a reasonably priced course on like Skillshare or something like that, then when they join over there, um, you know, you actually get paid, I think it's like per minute or something that people watch over there, which is pretty cool. Or you could have just like a low cost course for them. 
And when you frame something like that around, you know, it being an investment. So like if you're legitimately going to help those, them level up their, their job so that they can make more money, then in that case, that becomes more of an investment, not something to where they're just spending disposable income. Right. So like, if you're like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this particular thing. And the people that would be buying this thing are people that would have more of a disposable income. If you know that that wouldn't fit, then of course you wouldn't, you know, be trying to, to promote that at scale. I mean, maybe you would because some people, People would still have money, but, um, but, you know, making something to where it's like, Hey, if you get this, then, you know, it, it will help you because I'm, you know, trying to help you get a promotion essentially. Um, then in that case, you know, it becomes more of an investment instead of it being, you know, like, Oh, well, I'm just, you know, kind of throwing money away here on this thing that I don't really need. Andrew Cannon, in the house. What's up, dude? Hope you're hey, on fantastic. Andrew, what's going on, man? I'll be at bid summit though. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you, uh, over there looking forward to hanging out. Yeah. I don't think I'll do VidCon anymore. Yeah, I, I'm probably not going to do VidCon anymore either. Yeah, yeah, because that's 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 a, like it's cool. I like hanging out with people at VidCon, but it's um, yeah. it's more of a fan focus thing. Yeah. So like, um, you I, know, yeah. Um, if if we lived in the U.S. or close I'd to go the every, U.S., every single one right. of them. Yeah. If I was in yeah, the U.S., I would go to every conference there is. Yeah. Right. Right. Every but conference I, yeah, there is. Be, being on this side of the world, that's such a that's such a long trip yeah. to go to VidCon, and yeah, that's just not the event that I that I if, if I had to choose one event to go to every year, it's definitely Vid Summit. Yeah. Um, not, not, I, I don't think I go to VidCon anymore. Yeah. It's just, uh, did we, get, did, did we get his question by the way? Uh, so I don't use the word subs noted. I, yeah, I don't see it. I see him talking about, okay, so don't use the word subs noted, but he, I don't see him, that he actually posted the, Oh, he just put subs here and it showed up. It yeah, says I was just twice. asking about subs and then it, so, it showed up here. Yeah. Interesting. I wonder if they yeah. took that out of super chat. I wonder if people are using that word a lot in super chats. I'm not sure. Yeah. Not um, sure. I see Prince. Did you see my two comments? I'll have to go back and look. I, I, I don't see everything in the chat. Yeah, I like just, right here, he just put stupid, and it actually auto hid that. So here, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hit show just so he can see that it's. Uh, oh, never mind. Chantel already got it, um, and 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 deleted it. <laughs> so yeah, so no no worries. So hey man, if you just want to send me an email or send me a, like a DM on Twitter, um, then I'll just once the stream is over today, um, or I probably won't do it after the stream, but like tomorrow when I'm waking up and I have coffee and I'm checking my DMs, I'll I'll, I'll shoot you a message. Um, and, and answer whatever question you have. Do you do your DMs over coffee every morning? Is that your thing? Sometimes. Yeah, not not always. I don't really have a routine around it, but that's usually when I'm like in my phone. It's like, you know, I'll have coffee and then I'll you know, have my phone open, looking, you know, at emails and, you know, checking DMs, that kind of stuff. Do you wait? So I, I have this problem that if I write anything online mm -hmm. for like the first couple of hours when I wake up, I make horrendous mistakes. Oh, interesting. And I don't catch it. I like, do that at nighttime. Do you? Yeah. I'm solid at nighttime. Yeah. In, the, in the daytime, like when I first wake up the first few hours, like my brain is just not, you know, it, it, I, I'm in a very, I'm in a very creative mode, but like in terms of writing something, like I'll like double up words or like mess things. Like my brain's just not there yet. Interesting. It's yeah. Just I'm, like I'm full creative. creative I'm creative at night. Um, but in terms of like, you know, admin type stuff, that's not the best time for me to do that sort of thing. Yeah. You got a super chat. Super chat. Uh, let's hear. Doug said that uh, Tommy T's uh, just wanted to know if 40,000 subs was normal since 2017. So that in terms blocked. of normal. Yep. That was blocked from YouTube. So in How terms weird. of normal. Um, excuse me. So in terms of normal, um, when it comes to YouTube, there is, I mean, I'm sure there's averages and, you know, somebody that works at YouTube probably has data on like averages. But in terms of normal, like the... The, the thing that's so uh, interesting about YouTube is that all channels grow at such different rates and because there's so many variables involved, right? So for example, you know, one content creator, um, you know, like let's say a younger person, right? That, you know, um, that is on break for the summer. They can sit there and work on their YouTube channel all day long, every day long and create so much content that they'll be able to have enough content to make them through the entire school season, right? Whereas somebody that, you know, has a job, they have a family, um, they also have other hobbies that, you know, they spend a lot of time with and they don't have a ton of time to, you know, dedicate to their YouTube channels. Um, in that particular case, those people might take longer to, you know, to get the ball rolling. So, you know, in terms of, you know, hitting 40,000 subscribers in any capacity, it's, it's a win. Um, and, you know, most people don't make it that far, you know, when they start YouTube channels. So, you know, so you're crushing there, even though, you know, it's been since, uh, since 2017. So, um, so I think it's fine. Um, you know, just based on, you know, the, the little bit that I already know about your, uh, YouTube channel. Um, I think, I think you're, I think you're solid. You got a super chat here. T hand one, four, one Homestead, um, says I want to do members only live streams on YouTube and members only Facebook page. What is the best way using Streamyard? So all you have Good to do question, there, 
question. Yeah, really good question. So all you have to do there with StreamYard is um, you connect your YouTube channel there and you connect your Facebook page and then you can multicast out to both of them. Um, however, when it comes to YouTube, one thing that you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to schedule your stream privately, um, just schedule it private inside of StreamYard. And then you're gonna have to go over to your YouTube channel and that is where you actually change it to a members only stream. I don't think as of this moment right now, I don't think that you can um, have a members only stream from the drop down inside of StreamYard when you're scheduling it. I could be wrong on that because I, I've never tried to do that in StreamYard, but I don't think that's in their drop down right now. So because of that, schedule it private and then go into your YouTube channel and change it to a uh, members only live stream. And then um, what's going to happen is your members will see that. And then just as a good measure, the next thing that I would also do is I would take a link to that live stream and then I would actually make a community post about it and then mark that members only live or make it mark that as a members only community post and just say like, hey, here, you know, we're having this live stream on this day. Here's the link to it, blah, blah, blah. So, um, so then that way, if somebody doesn't hit your, have to hit your channel page to see it. They'll also see it in the community feed um, as well. So you're giving them like two vehicles to be able to see that that event is happening. And then for the Facebook page. So one thing that I found when it comes to the Facebook pages, and we tried to make a solution for this, but it didn't work. Um, one thing that I found when it comes to the Facebook pages um, as it relates to YouTube memberships is it's really hard to manage. So like as an example, if somebody joins your mem your Facebook group, then unless you have somebody or unless you're doing it yourself, that is checking every month. And you got to keep in mind, people join at different times, right? They join at different times. So they have to essentially constantly be checking your Facebook group against your YouTube channel memberships and then going in and cleaning people out. And another complication that you have is when people join on YouTube, that Travis MVP in the house, what's going on? MCP in the house, MVP in our world. What's going on, my dude? Hope you're doing fantastic. Nice always to uh, see MVP. you. MVP. Yep, always. Always the MVP. But, um, but another thing there is like uh, when somebody joins into the Facebook group, you might see their channel on YouTube, right? Or their name on YouTube, but that might not necessarily match their real name on Facebook or the page that they've created on Facebook that they joined your group with. So because of that, it's it's actually kind of complicated. Um, and I'm actually in, in the process of looking for solutions because a problem that I have is I also have people in my Facebook group right now that are not paying channel members. And because of that, um, when I put content in there, they're essentially getting access to that content, you know, without anything in exchange when other people are you know paying for that so i don't think that's fair so i'm actually in the process right now of actually looking for a solution to that so i can be a little bit more aggressive on the on the member side so um so just a heads up you're just you're going to create that problem for yourself as well when people go over the, fa the facebook page so you have to make sure that you're monitoring that closely um, or just try to find another platform other than facebook to do that on uh, Rich Graham says, hey, 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 Nick, can't wait to meet you at Vid Summit. Nice. Love that you're going to Vid Summit. And yeah, man, I will see you there. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So uh, let's see here. So next up on the list here, we got, uh, we got 86 taken care of already. Let me scroll to the top of the page. Bam. How are we doing on questions? And we've got, uh, we are number 20 right now. All right. Yeah, cruising through these. So right we, along. Yep. So we got behind the videos is our uh, next question here. And we have, they upload one time per week or more. They do stories of YouTubers. That's interesting. The goal of the channel is to show interesting, motivating, and entertaining stories of YouTubers. And the question is, I get 30% uh, retention on my videos, five to 10 minutes long. How do I improve this and hook people to watch the entire video? This is something you're gonna learn along the way. So what you wanna experiment with is obviously how you start the video. So I don't know if you're on camera. I don't know if you're showing the YouTuber on camera. I don't know you know, exactly what's going into your content, but what you wanna experiment with is playing music, not main mu playing music, showing yourself, not showing yourself, um, You know the different B-roll. So for example, are you starting with like a graphic talking about the content? Concept that you're going to talk about, or you're going to show a graphic or a video of the YouTuber that you're going to talk about, and you know, trying to you know keep their interest that way. So when it comes to YouTube, especially if you're doing stories of YouTubers, I would check out like Patty Galloway. There's also a bunch of like automated channels that are popping up um, that are doing the same exact thing that you're doing. And I would look for all the successful videos, like how are they starting their videos, right? Because success leaves clues, leaves clues. So just going and looking at all of those you know videos that are doing the same thing, or all those channels that are doing the same thing, and just seeing like. Like, okay, how are they grabbing attention, you know, when, when their videos first start? How are they telling their stories? How are they getting their story off of the ground, right? Um, those are things that I would definitely look into there. And like Doug said, better storytelling, story better telling. script writing, right? Better storytelling, better script writing, better editing. Mm-hmm. 
Um, our busy Aussie family says they upload one time per week or more. They do family vlogging content. The goal is to share our adventures with the world. And the question is, I've been monetized for a bit over a month now. Congratulations. Says um, I've added the sections for membership and have done a bloopers video for members only to see. I've also done a quick video and a short to advertise about our membership offer, which include the bloopers. I also put this in the community tab. My question is that nobody's wanted to be a member. What else do I need to do to try to bring members um, over? So the people that you are interacting or the people that are interacting with your content might not care about your bloopers right yeah. so well, they might not care that, about your membership yeah they might not care about the membership well it's because of the offering the, right right, right. right. The offer, yeah. that's what i mean like yeah. the, whatever you're offering them for the membership it's just not it's attractive bloopers yeah it's bloopers right. Right. so yeah so they might not care about bloopers so i would just experiment with different things that you're offering until you find something that they enjoy so a lot of times you know if you are doing like vlogging type type content which you are um doing more behind the scenes type stuff where you make additional content for your members is a really common thing with your type of content um where it's like hey you know these are the weekly videos that we put out onto YouTube, but we also put out some exclusive content for our channel members. Uh, that's a that's a common approach for that type of content. Ask your members what they would be interested in. Mm. Like they might have some ideas for you. Totally. Use your about. community feed. Yeah. Use your community totally. feed. Ask your members what they'd be interested in. Tell them you want to build a private community and ask them what they'd be interested in. Yeah. You know, because uh, you're going to have two sorts of people that are going to be joining you, uh, your membership. Number one, people who just want to support you because they like your, you and your family as creators. And number two, people who are looking for value. Mm -hmm. People are looking for some sort of value to get something in return. So you have to figure out how to, how to please both of those people. So Deo um, says, uh, what kind of content works best to capitalize off a conference like uh, VidCon, vlogs, recaps, tutorials, story, stories, interviews? So with VidCon, um, that's like a, you know, it's more of a fan focused thing. They do have an industry track where they, you know, share some like higher level things. But like, if you are going to go to a conference, like as a YouTuber and you're wanting to network with other YouTubers and learn from some of the biggest creators on the platform, you want to go to Vid Summit. Um, um, in terms of the different types of channels, oops, I accidentally deleted your question there. I hit the wrong button. I apologize. Um, sorry about that. And I, I don't have a way to bring it back. Um, but when it comes to, uh, when it comes to like the types of channels that are prime for that, it's any channel that wants to grow and better understand YouTube because they have content creators in all types of different niches there. Um, you know, entertainment channels, gaming channels, educational channels, um, that, you know, all different content types go to vid summit to, to, to learn how to, how to do all this stuff better. You know, one thing between like VidCon and vid summit, just as you were saying that I was just thinking about, see you there, Travis, the. The thing with Vid Summit, and again, they're doing it in a new location this year. Yeah. So I have no idea what the new location is going to be like. But historically speaking, Vid Summit is a more intimate environment, and everybody's kind of like in the same hotel for the most part through the, through the entire day, right? Yeah. It's like you're going to run into the same people in the elevators, at the restaurants, going through the hallways. So it's going to be store. the same in Dallas. So basically, I hopped on uh, Google uh, Google Earth or Google Maps there, right. and I did like a street view, and I'm like looking around, right. seeing like trying to catch a vibe, right? right like right. what's going to be going on here? And um, basically, the convention center is isolated here, and then it oh, has like the convention center. Yeah, and then okay. it has and then it has like hotels around. So um, so basically, the I, I think it's going to be a similar thing to where like so my to where it's basically like leave the hotels and then you go to the convention center and then once that's over then people will go back to the hotels and there'll be like you know groups of people hanging out at different hotels it'll probably be to where they'll um because i know at vidcon this happens too to where there's like hotels that are dominant in terms yeah. of like okay these are the ones where the you know companies are holding additional events and things like that so you'll want to go to them um so i'm guessing it's also going to be a pretty pretty cool intimate experience there too so what i do not like about vidcon is it's so big Mm -hmm. It's so big in the center that they, it's an Anaheim Convention Center, right? Is that what it's in? What uh, it's called? Yes. Yeah. That thing is absolutely massive. Yeah, it's pretty big. And it is complete. It's, it's spread out. And you, but it's by Disneyland or Disney World, whatever. I don't, I don't care yeah. about Disney World, but it's completely spread out. So the amount of, number one, the amount of walking that you have to do there is just, it, it's ridiculous because it's so spread out. And that makes it difficult to actually run into the creators that you wanna hang out with or have conversations with. I, I can't tell you how many times I've made plans, well, hey, let's meet up for lunch. And then it comes lunchtime or whatever, and like you're just- Where like, are you? Uh, you're on the on, other side. Yeah. yeah, man, I'm like a 20 minute walk away. So I-, I, I No the, shade on VidCon, by the way, just sharing like, you yeah, know, Yeah, yeah, no, just my yeah. experience. Like it, it's so big. And I understand that it has to be big because there's a huge turnout. Yeah. But it's so big that it's, I, it's it's not intimate at all, and it's difficult to have those. It, it, it's easy to lose people, and then once you get out of the convention center, it's man, it's just like people are going to all these different hotels, and there's stuff in the parking lot, and it's just so spread out. I just that's where I think 
Bid Summit has historically been really amazing is that it's just like here's keeping the things contained. It's yeah. contained. It's right here. You're going to run into the same people every single day. And uh, in terms of like making connections and networking, I think that's what makes it really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Two cents on that. So Deo, um, yeah, so again, yeah, um, just because I deleted the other one on accident. So yeah, um, all types of content um, for like Vid Summit. For VidCon, um, again, like industry track, technically any type of channel um, would go there, but that's more for, like you'll see more people there that are um, talking from like corporate channels and you know things like that um, so there's less individual you know creators sharing things there For big and con. more like you know like you know corporate channels and that kind of stuff some you know individual creators share things there as well in the industry tracks and the creator tracks but um, uh, in terms of the experience like, in terms of the level of the stuff that you're going to learn Vid Summit's the, the the one you want to yeah. go to if you're like okay here's the here's the different conferences that I can go to well, as a content about- creator Go to Bitsummit. He's talking about he wants to make content to capitalize on those. Talking about like if he's interviewing creators and that sort of thing. So it, it, yeah, if you're doing that, oh, so I if you're see. doing that, here's oh, the thing. I misunderstood. I'm yeah, sorry. so if you're going to go to VidCon, you're going to see a lot of creators who are speaking there. A lot of creators totally go there. Inter- totally interviews and vlogs. Yeah, any type yeah. of collaboration. Yeah, yeah, where you're doing like interviewing people because that will give you the opportunity to do very quick interviews with people that already have audiences. Yeah. But keep in mind, um, which means that you know if you put them in the thumbnail that you know some people will click on it because they're on it. But one thing with that is remember that you know when you go there, it's more of like a you know working and networking thing, and people do make videos. I make videos there too, yeah. but um, but it's more uh, you know about that conversation, and then you save the videos and you know things like that for you know more downtime and you know that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, still, if I had to go, if I had to choose yeah, one, where vlogs I would do, and interviews, vlogs and day. interviews and, and stuff, stories, I would yeah. go to Vid Summit for that as yeah. well. Yeah, for people are because it, it everybody's accessible. Every, exactly, right. that's the thing. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. oh, hey, 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 Nick, how you doing, man? Yeah, hey, VidCon people dude. are behind. Like, they put them in different sections and they yeah. kind of section everybody off from the public. But yeah. at VidCon, you know, we're all peers at VidCon. Yeah. So you know, because of that, you know, you'll be in the hallway and then like you'll look over here and then like Ryan Trahan will be standing over here like talking to somebody that has like 300 subscribers on their YouTube channel, right? Trying to tell them like how they can make their channel better. Yeah. And so, VidCon, yeah, it's a, VidCon is really they, they like have all these different tiers and even if you get I feel in, like we're doing a commercial. No, 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 no. And, and even if you get into this right. tier, like even if you're on like yeah. the creator space, like maybe Instagram will be there and they'll section off this area right. and you're gonna have a special pass to get into yeah. there. YouTube does that too. Yeah, and yeah. if you don't have like t- you, you know, it's like you just get shut out of so many things at VidCon, yeah. in my experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm uh, I VidCon, you're watching it. Vid Summit, you're in it. Man, nailed it. Yeah. V- yeah. Tommy I'm, T's Extreme Roller Coaster um, says, uh, thanks, Jinch. You, you both and Daniel are the three I follow every week for updated content and weekly news. Thank you for that, man. Really appreciate it. I'll say this. I've never gone to VidCon for anything other than to hang than out. Hanging with, out. Than hanging yeah. out. I go to Vid Summit for hanging out, for networking, for speaking, for learning, d- yeah. learning for yeah, yeah. Like Vid Summit's everything, uh, everything rolled into one. VidCon for me is just hanging out. Yeah, it's just hanging out because I, I'm not really interested in hearing like you know people who work in Instagram give talks, right? Because that's you get a lot of that. Yeah. So unless um, it's like Todd, then I'm going into Todd. Yeah, but or, yeah, or him, and Renee, him and Renee did a talk. Or Roberto. There, yeah. You know, there's some people I would go in to hear him talk. Yeah. Uh, um, T's Hot Miss History says, Vid Summit is at my birthday time and in my state. I look forward to meeting everyone. Um, gift ideas, diamond and cash. See y'all soon. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, see you, uh, see you there. Cash. Diamond and cash. There we love go. <laughs> We're bringing gifts. Callister's Recipes, what's going on? Hope you are doing you just, fantastic. You just got roped into cash. Yeah, it's great. Yep. So um, next up on our list here, um, we have, um, let's see what we've got. So we've got uh, Fish Head Videos. They do fish camp cook and nature content the goal of the channel is fun family and eventually income question is is there a way to stop youtube from automatically setting my mobile live streams to private at the end with under a thousand subs i need the watch time during the stream but lose it when it gets set to private absolutely what you want to do and this is going to be a little bit difficult if the only thing you have to access youtube with is your mobile device but you can do it so what you want to do is you want to go into whatever device you're on you want to open up google chrome in your browser then you want to go into the address bar at the top and you want to type in uh, studio.youtube.com you may or may not be logged into your youtube account already if not then you'll need to log in but once you hit that it's going to try to force you over into the app instead of going into the app instead you want to hit the um, three dot icon or the three dot menu which is 
down in the bottom right hand corner and then you want to scroll up and you want to go to the option that says request desktop site and then when you click on that then it's going to start showing youtube and anything else you visit um, as it would look on a computer and that's going to allow you to get into more specific things like audience retention reports you know additional settings things like that so what you want to do in that case is you want to um, go into your upload defaults so when you go into your uh setting there Actually, no, no, no. You actually want to go into your live stream uh, settings for this. So give me one second. Hey, just pause for a second. Are you, and I, I haven't used YouTube to stream directly. Are you telling me that they're doing all of that so you don't, hold on, I'm walking through this right now. Hold on, go live. Have they not fixed that yet? Hold on. Here it is. No, I, no, it, it is fixed. What? So you've got visibility as soon as you go live. In StreamYard? Are they talking about StreamYard? Or you no, 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 no. Yeah, the, yeah they're, they're talking about YouTube. His problem is um, is when the stream is finished, it's automatically privating the video. Because they've got their visibility set. No, visibility or? is what is if people can see it or not. Right. So what, what is happening is people when can it see ends, it when he's live, but when, when it's it ends, end, it it's takes ending, it off. And it's automatically going out. Yeah, so you need to actually schedule your live stream. And then once your live stream is um, scheduled, then you need to go into your uh, details page, I think it is. Give me one second. I'm trying to find this here. Um, but okay. I think you need to go into your video details page of your live stream and then i think there maybe is where you check that option but basically here's what's going on so That's youtube so chaotic to yeah have to do all that so yeah. youtube has an option for live streams that you have to check that says to keep your live stream public uh, when it's finished. I'm looking on the video's details page and it's not here. Okay, so then that would actually happen in your live stream settings for the content. I can't go into that now because I'm currently live, um, but basically what happens is you wanna schedule your stream and then you wanna go to into it the same exact way that I told you using Google Chrome, but instead of going down into the settings option, you wanna go up and you wanna click into the little create button and then you click on that and then it's gonna give you the option for live stream, click on that and then um, it's going to show you your scheduled live stream and then you want to click into that and then in there is where you're going to find that option or that checkbox to make it where you can um, unbelievable it is that is um, unbelievable but that's where you find that option to make sure that your um, streams stay public after they are uh, after they are complete yeah desktop you go in there on a desktop and do that it's going to be a lot easier than the pinch and yeah zoom. you got, if you, got, a, if you got a buddy or something like uh that that's definitely you know the way to do it yeah yeah so renee says um let me know if there's anything we can improve here absolutely adding that to the mobile app yeah you know like one, one thing I one thing to those guys are doing the mobile app yeah so d's talked to the mobile team over yeah, there or know. somebody in the mobile team. they know they know yeah they, they know a lot of this stuff already he's yeah. already sent them that but he says send him another note also so he can forward it yeah but um but basically um they need to they definitely need to think about especially with shorts now um they need to think yeah. about you know the the mobile content creators more and and make settings all of the settings not necessarily all the analytics and stuff but all of the settings they need to make sure that content creators can access those um in the mobile app like like this person's situation for example like they're going live me, and it's it's automatically um making them private so because of that um unless it's been added recently to the mobile app i don't see even I was upload looking. even upload I was defaults um what? i believe i don't think are in the mobile app well, so me, like little things like that to where you know a content video. creator can just get all that stuff set up on their mobile device for all the people that only do YouTube on their phone, I think would be just a really big, uh, you know, just a really big benefit to mobile content creators because historically, uh, you know, YouTube has, uh, you know, prioritized desktop, which makes sense, you know, um, in, in some cases, but, make but sense. these okay. days, because so many people are making content with just their mobile devices, making everything, you know, more accessible for them, um, you know, definitely makes, definitely makes sense. Yeah. We're talking about live streams. Here, here's the yeah. thing that boggles my mind. And again, I, I'm not, no shade. I think YouTube's doing an amazing job. Yeah. And, but, but there's just some things where you're just left thinking, like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. For example, let's just take, I'm going to take India. For example. If anybody's in India, raise your hand right now watching this. I'm going to take India. India is historically, like, they're making content on phones in India. Yeah. Like, a lot. Mm -hmm. And U.S. A, too, like, you know, there's right, a lot right, of people. I mean, yeah. I, I, if I would, you only, really quick, just for the chat, for the yeah. people that are here right yeah. now, if you are somebody that only makes videos on your phone, like you don't do any of this stuff on a computer, you only use your phone to create content, upload it to YouTube and optimize it and everything, like you do everything on your phone. If that's you, just just say me in the chat. I'm curious if there's, if there's you know, a lot of them here. I mean, that's what here. my whole channel was about. I know, I know, like I, I, know. I, I I'm, <laughs> for reference. Yeah, I know. 
I've been able to make a full time living based on educating people who make content on their phone. Right, right. Just give so you a reference. That tells you the scale. That so, tells you the right, scale, right. and I'm just like one guy. Right. Uh, and there, you know, there's other people doing that as well. But I'm just, just focus on like one country. I, I can't even imagine, like, just take India because I know mobile usage there is like just yeah. one of the highest. You know, yeah. parts of Africa and stuff like that, Philippines, Southeast Asia. Yes, yeah, so like, we got a few coming into the chat right now. Like yeah. all of these people making content on their phones. I actually thought there would be more in here. Well, well, there could be other times. But there is no, no excuse, in my opinion, not to have the same basic functions. In settings also. In settings, right, for for people who are doing stuff on their phones. Yeah, totally. And and they're getting better. They're getting better. Like, I've I've talked to, you know, the lead over in the mobile team, and I know they're adding this stuff, and they're fantastic. They're adding stuff all the time. So, you know, props for that. But it's just like... Get on Like, it. speed it up a little bit. Get on it. Yeah, speed it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah there was something else we were just talking about, like, um, not too long ago. And they, they may have added Yeah, because it. the part of what we were talking about, I remember, and you're like, was, with shorts right now, like, I don't know why they're not doing this. Yeah, but there was yeah. something about, like, uh, uh, like monetization. Like, or, man, there, yeah, was, there sure. was something specific where we couldn't believe it wasn't activated for mobile users. Mm. I, I forget yeah, what it I'm was. Yeah, I'm not sure. But, yeah. I know, but I know they're working on it. Like they're, they're adding stuff all the time. So I'm not, like, you know... Throwing shade? Yeah, no, I'm not throwing shade. I, it, mad respect, because I know it, it, there's a lot to do. But just work faster, guys. You work don't want to want to throw throw shade. Yeah. Work faster is all I'm trying to say. So next up, we've got, uh, let's see here. We've got Nerd Potion. Nerd Potion says that they upload daily. They have been on YouTube for one year or more. They do gaming content. The goal of the channel is for entertainment and fun, and as always, a hope for a career. And the question is, I was wanting to ask if having two channels of almost the exact same name will affect each other as far as search results, algorithm, and recommendations. Example, my main channel is Nerd Potion, and my second channel is Nerd Potion 2.0, and I'm afraid that they're affecting each other. No. So, um, so... Each channel is treated differently. Each video is treated differently on YouTube. So because of that, you're fine having like a Nerd Potion and a Nerd Potion, nerd potion uh, 2.0. Another thing that content creators, you know, you'll typically see on YouTube is you'll have content creators that will have a main channel. And then once they get a following, they'll have people asking questions about their lives and things like that. And they'll say like, well... That's not what my channel's about. You know, I talk about, you know, TV reviews, but since people are wanting to know all this stuff because I kind of, you know, talk about it every now and then in a video or live stream or something, I'm going to make a vlog channel. So then instead of it being, you know, like, uh, you know, Nick Nimmin, it would be Nick Nimmin vlogs, right? And people do that kind of thing a lot too. So, um, so yeah, you, you don't have anything to worry about there. The, you know, everything's basically going to be based on just how people respond to the content on each channel. That's the most important thing. And that's really the only thing that will make a difference there. Did you see what Doug wrote? And, and yeah, and I forgot about this. He says, um, YouTube says to help make YouTube safe community for everyone. We may limit the amount of viewers on your mobile stream. Well, oh, that's convenient. Thank you. Uh, and archive your li- and archive live streams will be set to private by default. Oh. So that's for people under 1,000 subscribers. Oh, okay. Okay. That's, I would love to know the reasoning behind that. Hey, Doug, when you get the chance, will you send me that link on Discord also? I would love to know the reason, like the true reason behind that. That's really interesting. I wonder. I, I remember hearing this at one time and I completely forgot about it. Like, like the, uh, the thing about. Uh, Limiting the number of people on your streams. That's really interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, yeah, because that's like, okay, well, because I'm doing it on my phone and you're even talking about this. You're like, hey, I'm thinking about just having like a little side channel for fun to where I like drive people around town and show them yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah, about yeah, Thailand. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about doing like a vlogging thing. Yeah. And like, just seeing that, I'm just like. Maybe yeah, it's I like, won't. well, you're going to be limited when you yeah. when you do it. Yeah, yeah, that's that, at love, least until you get to that, you know, that amount of, uh, you know, that amount of time. Know the about, man, Renee, so you Travis know the reason says Travis that. says that it's because of the people who have streamed, um, you know, uh, terror acts and you know things like that. That makes sense for people going in and doing that. But um, but you know, if somebody hold has on, hold on, we're only going to let a hundred people watch an act of terror. <laughs> <laughs> well, they would not know capping. that it was that though. They wouldn't know it was that until you know until it happened. What's the difference? But, but yeah, yeah, you're right. You're 50 right. Fifty people can watch it, or five hundred people can right, watch it. You're right. streaming it. Right. You're streaming it. And then if they get a thousand subscribers, then it's okay. Right. They can have more. Right. right. Yeah, you can have more people watching if you get a thousand subscribers. Right. Hit a thousand subscribers yeah. and do your worst. <laughs> we'll stream that. <laughs> But if you have under a thousand subscribers, you are not worthy of streaming your acts of terror on YouTube. 
Yeah, I mean, that's essentially what they're saying. Yeah. That's literally what they're saying, actually. If I guess so it. next up, uh, we've got uh, Hobby Genix. <laughs> Renee, get on that. What's going on, Hobby, man? Hobby Genix says that they upload when they have time. <laughs> the uh, type of channel is crafting and hobbies. Mm. The uh, goal of the channel is to entertain uh, people, have fun, and eventually make money. And the question is, when is the right time to monetize and can you do it too soon? I built a website with a store and Patreon-like memberships, but haven't populated or turned it on yet because I don't feel I have enough videos to justify it. And I don't want to look like the channel is just a cheap excuse to sell things because that is definitely not my intention. Just want to support the channel to allow more and better content. So in my opinion, I think content creators should be trying to figure out how to monetize if they plan to do this for a long time. Um, I think content creators should be trying to monetize as fast as possible. Um, I don't think that monetization should take priority over skill building. Um, I think skill building should be the priority yes. in terms of like, you know, if, if you have monetization attached to your content, but you just don't know how to get people to respond to your content yet, it's not going to do anything for you. Um, but having some things in place is helpful just in case. But when you like, if you focus like, okay, well, I got to, I'm doing this affiliate thing. So I got to, you know, I'm going to spend like four hours trying to find the best affiliate, you know, thing for this. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm, you know, putting that in my video descriptions and all that. Like, that's fine. But if you still like are working on like, okay, I, I'm having trouble getting people to click on my content, then, you know, focus on that first. And then once you can get some type of activity on the channel, um, you know, with the videos, then in that case, as soon as you can start getting some type of activity, like a hundred views, then, you know, then, then start, you know, working in monetization. Now, you know, again, I'm a fan of monetizing as fast as possible because you don't know when your next video is going to, you know, put you on the map, so to speak. So because of that, um, I'm a big fan of getting monetization in place as fast as you possibly can. And in some cases, even your very first video. And the reason for that, like I said, is because you don't know when that next video is going to pop. Plus, you don't know if that very first video that you published, it might not do great when you first publish or it may. But that video, once YouTube gets a clear understanding of the people that are responding to your con to your content, it might take you 10 videos or 20 videos on the channel. And then YouTube's like, oh, hey, these people are responding to all this other videos. Let's show them that first video. And then they start showing that first video and then people ha have a high response to that. That video could still blow up. So, you know, because of that, having some of those things in place is really advantageous. But I would not sacrifice like the skill building side in order to, you know, get those things in place if you know, you're still working on like, man, I'm just trying to, you know, figure out how to get people to watch more than like, you know, 18 seconds on my video. Um, if you're there, then I would work on that part first. But if you're like, okay, I can get people through my video. I've got people clicking on my content. I'm getting like, you know, 50 to hundred views per video. Then going ahead and saying like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to put something in here and, uh, you know, some type of affiliate link or something like that. Um, while I'm waiting on ads or always, um, is definitely something to do. Even in your case, right? You have this website that you built. So there, you know, branding the website around what it is that you're doing, you could even do it in a subtle way to where when you start your videos, you're like, you know, I'm just going to pretend your name is Nick, but you'd be like, I'm going to pretend your name is Nick and your website is craftingandhobbies.com. So basically when your video starts, Hey, I'm Nick from craftingandhobbies.com. Welcome to another video, blah, blah, blah. And then you start getting into, you know, the thing or just start getting into the thing and then somewhere say, Hey, you know, by the way, I'm Nick from crafting and, uh, crafting and hobbies, uh, you know, uh, dot com. Uh, or if you don't want to do any of that, because of course you want to get people into the content as fast as possible. Another kind of sly thing you can do there that's non-interruptive is you can have what's called a lower third pop up on your video. A lower third is a graphic that pops up in the lower third of your video. So you can make that to where it just pops up, says your name. And then underneath your name, it has your, um, you know, whatever value it is that you're offering on your website. And then it has, uh, you know, that, you know, uh, dot com. So in my case, if I was doing something for like tuber tools, which is my website where content creators can get graphics for their videos, then I would say, you know, uh, I would have my name, Nick Nimmin. And then underneath there, I would say, you know, get graphics for your videos at tubertools.com. Um, or I could just put it down there for the sake of curiosity and say, you know, owner of tubertools.com. And then by doing those two things, it's like, okay, well, uh, you know, I'm spreading awareness about it without being like, you know, crazy aggressive about it just to make sure I have, you know, these things in place when I'm published. Really long answer to say, make sure charged. your skills are the priority and then monetize as fast as possible. In addition to ad revenue. Got a super chat. It says, okay, D, this question is for you. All right. Interesting. No offense, Nick, he says. Hey, no problem. But how would you make a roller coaster video short? Uh, make a video on a roller coaster Drops. exciting. Drops. For the... For the first ten seconds, exciting. Yeah, it depends. Okay, I don't. I don't. I'm not a roller coaster enthusiast. Drops. So 
So I'm not sure what your audience likes, but I would try drops. I, I would also try things like this because I know some people are like really into roller coasters. Mm -hmm. So I would talk about or time it. So you got let's see, you got 60 seconds. So let's say you're doing like, you know, 50 seconds of the climb and then that last 10 seconds is the drop. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one way. So you could start. I'm going to give you a couple options here. One you could just film it as you're going and if you lose your phone doing this or your gopro i'm not taking any responsibility it's all game roller coasters it's not real roller coasters oh yeah really? so it's game roller coasters yeah so basically uh what you can what you, he would be able to do in his case is he would be able to and i know he asked you Hold this on. but there, i'm just giving you context there's, you know what's going on. there's game roller coasters oh yeah yeah make that make sense to me so basically you can um you can do this in vr too so okay. you can do that it on like a normal that, that, computer that you can do it in sense. vr um but basically you essentially ride the you ride the roller coaster okay. yeah if you go to his channel you'll see exactly so what drops. Doing. Yeah. okay so drops so, yeah, so drops are doing you know like that part of it because that you know that part builds that anticipation like oh what's this going to be like you know type of thing and you can see the end coming so then it's like oh here it comes i wonder what this drop is going to be like yeah okay but, yeah, but playing, one thing he could do there is he could have one to where he just experiments. Game roller coaster, so he, he experiments with, you know, that that climb and he times it around the short, of course. But, you know, do different video links to see if there's one, if you find a sweet spot. But basically have it to where you have the climb um, and then the drop for, you know, the satisfaction side of it. Um, and then you have uh, you could also do like different drops. So, for example, like it starts and you take like 10 different games and you put them together and it's like this, like 10 best roller coaster, you know, drops. And it's like, bam, 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 bam. And then you just show those. So people are like, whoa, cool. Whoa, cool. I'm, whoa, I'm cool. trying to wrap my head around the idea that people play roller coaster games. Yeah. So fretboard diary says planet coaster is uh, is one of the ones. Yeah, that's uh, that's news to me. So mm -hmm. my thought was, if you were a real roller coaster channel, like GoPro and it was like a chess GoPro. No, or no, something. no. Well, yeah, that. But mm -hmm. I was thinking about, too, because one thing that works really well is I see a lot of people doing well is they'll just show something they'll show something you might say something like this is the fastest roller coaster in six flags mm -hmm. like really quick right out of the gate yep. you got some captions on the top you're actually shooting shoot like the you know the, the craziest looking part of the roller coaster this is the fastest roller coaster in six flags or this is the yeah, biggest it's games yeah right. it's games though yeah this is, so. right if somebody's watching with the real roller coaster uh, channel, got I'm help yep, you out. covered you're right. right right <laughs> this is the biggest yeah this coaster is oh. the biggest drop in the world right like show it really quick fast editing and then maybe you can actually film that drop coming in or, or the speed of it or something like that but in terms of the hook tell them what it is let them know why why it is what it is and do it that way but if you're doing video games i got nothing i don't play video games uh i didn't even know roller coaster games were a thing i learned something today hmm. no I, but i don't understand the attraction to it if, if it's not so, vr why and excuse me my ignorance on this if it's not vr what's the attraction to a roller coaster game not sure. Well, you're aware of them. I'm aware, but I'm I'm not like I don't watch those or play those uh, you know, play those games. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Like I'm not a roller coaster person. I like, had no yeah. idea that was a game thing. Yeah. VR I get it. Like you're in experience or whatever. But if you're a game, mm -hmm. like what's the point? Like do you get points for riding it? I don't know. I don't know if it's points for riding it. I don't know if you can control the speed maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, it could be like a I thing where you try to keep game. it in the rails. Maybe I'm not. I'm not sure. Someone what the, in the uh, chat, uh, Tommy, maybe you can explain. Like, what's what's the goal of a roller coaster game? Do you like ride it without a harness and see how long you can like a mechanical bull without getting thrown out? Like, what what do you do with the roller coaster game? Because I'm I'm blown away here. And really quick, while he's oh, working you on build that, build them. You build the roller coaster. While he's working on that, shaking hands and art with uh, Freelands and friends says, "Can I sell my own products and art from my channel? I have 500 subscribers. So what you can do." Um, in your case specifically, you could set up like a Shopify store and then you could link to that in your video description. Um, at 500 subscribers, um, I don't think I'd have to double check. Um, I, I didn't sleep well last night, so my brain's not where it normally is if you can't tell by my energy today. Um, but basically, uh, uh, once you hit a certain subscriber threshold, you can directly connect that Shopify account to your YouTube channel and then your art would show up underneath. Your then your art would show up underneath your, uh, your YouTube videos. So what you want to do um, is in the meantime while you're you know getting to that milestone is you can go ahead and set up a shopify store on that shopify store um, you can make your art available there and then you can let people know that it's available in your video description and then they can go into your video description and click a link that will take them to your store where they can purchase the um that the art that you have on your youtube channel so there's a little bit of a learning curve involved with that um, in terms of the setup there's tons of videos on youtube that will help you you know figure out how to set up those you know that type of shop plus shopify themselves you know they have like training material and stuff like that definitely comes with a little bit of a learning curve but you know you can you know just spend the time on it and you'll be able to you know figure it out no problem
Yeah, so I'm like learning stuff today. So yeah, he's like blown away by the roller coaster. No, I, I love this it. is a yeah. So yeah, I'm being told that you can build your own roller coaster games that you build and ride it. Uh, other people says that you can um, set your hold on building and riding without the worry of proper code or danger. Nice, nice. Um, it's building. Hold on, it's building and watching your creation come to life without the hard work. That's fascinating. I had no idea this thing existed. So if that if that's the case, I mean, I, I would have to know what your audience is actually interested in. Are they interested in the drops? Or are they interested in the creation that you've made? If they're interested in the creation that you've made, again, tell them what it is. I just made the craziest role, whatever. Tell them what it is. Be, you know, sell a little bit. Make it sound exciting. I, I'm going to have to look into this. I'm blown away. So I just had a super chat disappear here. Give me one oh. second. Let me go back in and find this. And really quick, um, yeah. Homekeeping Channel, uh, welcome game. to the uh, Nimenati wow. there. Uh, make sure you go right. to nimenvip.com. It's going to redirect you to the Facebook group. Um, and, uh, uh, of course, fill out the information on the way in. If you can do that before the stream is over today, then I can get you in there um, before the uh, stream is over. Costume uh, Co. says, I'm not into gaming, but that sounds like so much fun. Okay. Building a roller coaster so, hold on, really quick. Awesome. So to Upstate and Beyond, they said they just wanted to say thanks for all the tips and info. Um, their channel just recently hit 1,500 subscribers, now just working on our watch hours. Congratulations to you. High five and fist bump for, uh, for getting your first 1,500 subscribers on your channel. All right. I have to look into this. Somebody suggest a game to me. Not where I can ride. I'm not interested in riding it. Where I can build a roller coaster and then, like, check the physics of it. Do they, is that, do they do that? I have no idea. Can you check the physics of the roller coaster you build? Somebody give me a name. I'm, I'm fascinated. So um, it looks like they also have business management. Um, so I guess you can build one people want to ride and get more people into the park. Oh, that's yeah, so interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Tommy. Yeah, uh, send me some information on it. I, I, yeah, that's fascinating. D likes to build stuff. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. So D might actually get into that, actually. Yeah. yeah, like riding it, I couldn't wrap my head around it. I don't want to ride a game or ride Like VR, I get it. But just like normally, like, you know. Okay, woo. <laughs> you know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> woo. But like, yeah, you, like you sit in front of the computer. Right. Oh, yeah okay. well that was intense oh, right. yeah yeah that's yeah. where i was trying to wrap my head around it like, hey, here we go we're going up yeah i didn't down. know either i didn't know if it was like riding it or building it but or whatever building it and trying to get the physics right and trying so, to get the structure right so you have three cool. uh three recommendations here roller coaster or sorry two roller coaster tycoon and planet coaster <laughs> d respectfully sometimes it feels like you interrupt your bro quite a bit i do <laughs> he does that, i do i that's do his, that's his role yeah. he loves it yeah i do that's his role yeah i do <laughs> So uh, shoot, shoot. next up on the uh, next up on the list here, oh my god, we have uh, Stealthy Sprite. Stealthy Sprite does gaming and game review content. The goal of the channel says grow it as much as I can. Um, I also want to start streaming, and the question is, should I put quality in my videos or quantity? So we talked about this earlier. Um, so just remember that you know you need to get your content no matter what to a level that it's competitive for the platform. Once you do that, if you want to, you know, and, and by, you know, competitive for the platform, I mean that it's, that that viewers are enjoying the content, not necessarily that it's that it's quality for in a technical nature, but just to a point where people are enjoying it at scale, right? Um, once you do that, and once you, you know, get it to that point, then from there, that's when you can start deciding like, hey, do I wanna ramp this up or not? But here's the thing that's very important about this that I didn't mention when we first started, you know, talking about that previously today, is if you don't make content that's competitive for the platform, no amount of quantity is going to get you what you want from your YouTube efforts. It doesn't matter if you put out a million videos on your YouTube channel, if you don't make content that people respond to um, in a positive way, then in that particular case, even a million videos isn't gonna, or it, yeah, a million videos isn't gonna do anything for you. Because, you know, if people don't respond well to it, then no amount of content is going to just suddenly make people respond well to it. Um, but if you are like, hey, I'm trying to make, you know, something for other people here, and I'm trying to make it as good as I possibly can for them. And I'm paying really close attention to how people are responding to the videos that I'm publishing, what topics that I talk about that people like more than others, what themes that I do that people like more than others. Then in that case, it gives you the the, the lead on what to do next, right? So, um, so because of that, just focus on, you know, adding value to the people that are watching your content try to make it as technically good as you need to but you know keep in mind it doesn't have to be you know perfect in terms of you know uh, audio and video quality it just has to be good enough to where people can come into it they can enjoy it um to where the quality itself isn't a distraction right so if the audio is just horrible then of course people are gonna be like yeah this is, this is garbage I, I can't even tell what's going on here and they'll leave but if the audio is good enough to where people are not thinking anything about the audio 
then you've hit the mark. If your video content is good enough to where nobody's thinking like, wow, this looks weird or like, wow, this is the, something's uncomfortable about this. Not sure what it is. Like, you know, if you're not hitting any of that stuff um, or it's like, Hey, it's too dark. I can't see anything. Then in that case, you know, you've, you've hit that, you know, minimum mark. And then from there it becomes all about the viewer experience and what it is that they're getting from your content. And then once you crack those two things, then you can, you know, amplify, you know, the quantity if you want to. Dude, did you see this? So fretboard diary says, uh, those games show G forces and how sick people will get. Oh wow, that's interesting. That's incredible. That is. So you can design your roller coaster. That so will... this time, so so like tonight, D is gonna send me a message like, "Holy cow, dude! I think I just found my thing." Yeah, Tommy, <laughs> Tommy, we're gonna have to do collabs in the future, man. Yeah, but 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 shorts right there. <sighs> this roller coaster is guaranteed to make you sick. Mm. There's a hook. Yeah, that is. Right? That's good. Yep. Wow, I'm fascinated. Stealthy sprite, my pleasure. So next up, we have uh, Rusty Graffiti Reviews. Um, they do bi-weekly content. They've been on YouTube for one year or more. They do uh, graffiti products, and uh, it's a graffiti product review channel. I just want to say how awesome that is really quick. What is it? Basically, the channel is, re from what I'm picking up here, they are reviewing products that people use for graffiti. <laughs> That's awesome. That's super niche, and <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. But the goal of the channel is to pass my knowledge and experience um, with new projects to others. And the question is, I have no face review channel because the nature of the content, totally get it. Um, what I want to know is, is there a way to go live, but with my face distorted so I can interact with viewers but still remain anonymous? So they do have voice changing um, software and they do have voice changing hardware as well. So um, I think, hey, D, does your, um, what's that thing you have over there that's not the Roadcaster, but the other one? Does that have voice changing on it? Okay, so the Go XLR has some, but D says it's not that great. Um, uh, the Roadcaster Pros, the new ones, they also have voice changing things in there as well, um, where you'd be able to do that. You can pitch it up or pitch it down. Um, you also have like robot voices and things like that in there. There's also um, some software um, options as well. I don't have them here, I have them at home, and I don't ever use them, but I can't remember off the top of my head what they are. But if you have a Stream Deck, um, they actually have one in there that also you know is a voice changer as well, where you can trigger that there um it requires a little bit of a setup on the software side but you can absolutely yeah you can absolutely accomplish what you're trying to accomplish um the hardware version is going to be more expensive where the software version is going to be almost free if not completely free um let's see here next up on the list we've got uh olisa korabka i apologize if i'm if i'm saying that wrong says um they have a professional niche content about seo very cool says the goal is search engine optimization um in case you don't know what seo is for everybody watching um the goal is to help people get better at search engine optimization and to get more profit or satisfaction and recognition from what they do and the question is should i try paid ads to get more views or will it ruin my organic performance so if people respond highly to your content you can mix the two if you want to um it's usually recommended that you don't because um, you know, in some cases, you know, like you could target the wrong audience. And then if those people start interacting with your content, it can kind of send your channel in another direction. So because of that, you know, if you do take that approach, you have to be kind of careful exactly who it is that you're advertising to and make sure that you are targeting everything properly. But if you can get an organic response from your content, you can support that with ads if you want to. Um, but one thing to, you know, make sure that you keep in mind is that you do not want to use ads as a crutch. And what I mean by that is, if the content that you're making right now, if the reason that you're wanting to run ads is because you are having trouble getting people to respond organically to your videos, you got to fix that problem first. And the reason for that is because let's say you say, I'm going to spend like a thousand dollars on this video because I also have some other monetization things built in, which is another important part of it. Like I never recommend using ads just to grow the channel. Like you, if you're going to use ads, you should have a way to make a return on those ads, um, you know, either through courses that you're selling in your particular case or other products that you have or something like that, or like an affiliate offer that's attached to the video or something along those lines, so you can get a real return on it instead of it just being a total loss for the sake of vanity metrics. Um, but when you are, um, uh, if you don't have, you know, that organic response on your channel yet, and then you're just like, hey, I'm just going to flood, you know, this with ads, then it might look great from the outside. But what's going to happen is as soon as you turn off your ad spend, if you haven't learned how to get that organic response yet, then what's going to happen is all of your traffic is going to dry up because you still, even if YouTube says, hey, 
here's uh, you know one of uh, Olicia's videos on a homepage to one of the people that interacted with your content. If they show one of your pieces of content there, if you haven't learned how to get them to click yet, then they're not going to respond to your content because they're still not going to click, right? So because of that, you know you have to make sure that you get all of that under control first, and then once you get all of that under control, then that's where if you want to you know supplement what it is that you're doing um, with ads, then you know you can definitely do that. But from what I'm looking at right here. Um, it looks like, you know, five months ago, you had a video with like 2000 views on it. You had another video with like 1.8 thousand. So you are able to get people to click. Um, so, you know, because of that, you might be okay. You got another video here with like 6,000, another one with 3.8 uh, thousand from, uh, you know, two years ago. So you might be able to get people to click. So because of that, in your case, if you wanted to supplement, you can, um, but you know, just keep in mind that when you do that, you have to make sure that you're targeting everything perfectly, because if not, you know, it can end up, you know, that whole attempt can end up kind of blowing up in your face, so to speak. I recommend, you know, organic, um, you know, it just focusing everything on organic growth if you can, but, um, but, you know, ads is definitely something you can supplement with if you want to. Next on our list, uh, we've got Learn Spanish World. What's up, man? Hope you're doing great. It says, um, they do educational content. The goal of the channel is to provide educational value to my YouTube community while I work hard in order to become a full-time YouTuber. And the question is, I've been um, offered several sponsorships in the past few weeks. However, most of the offers involve downloading large files and software. I'm worried I could be downloading viruses or that someone may try to gain access to my channel. I've heard a few horror stories about people losing their channel after downloading fake sponsorship-related files. How can someone determine if a sponsorship is genuine? Thanks, Amy go so if somebody is a software company like for example um like you know uh the agreements that i have with camtasia right as part of that you know i get a copy of camtasia so i mean i i bought it in the past but you know as part of our you know deal i get a copy of camtasia um that lasts for the duration of our deal and with that you know i need to download that software so that i can use it but they're a reputable company um if I had some brand new company pop up and they were trying to get me to do that, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't do it. Um, because, you know, like you're saying, you know, there's so many horror stories right now. I would never download a zip file from anybody. I would never download, you know, a piece of software unless you know for certain that it's a reputable, a reputable company. And you can check that by, of course, checking out their website, but also going to their LinkedIn account, seeing what's going on there, going to any Facebook pages they have, see what's going on there, and just getting an idea of like, okay, has this company been around a little bit? Are they reputable? You know, that whole thing. Um, yet you, yeah, you really have to be diligent there in your research to make sure that, um, you know, the, 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 the people that you're interacting with are solid. Now, of course, there are other things like, you know, you know, you can check your email headers and you can see where the email is coming from, making sure it's coming from, you know, the company that they're saying they're, you know, representing that kind of stuff. But what you're talking about here, where you download like a PDF or you download a, a zip file or a piece of software, that is like the, those are the number one ways that people get access to people's YouTube channels. Um, so I would definitely be extremely cautious with that. Um, because you don't want to put yourself, you know, in that situation. Um, let's see here next. So, um, we've got uh, legend Deshaun. legend Deshaun says that they upload every other day. The type of channel is GTA ARP. Um, and zombie style games that are free. The goal of the channel is to create a big community of like-minded people who enjoy games similar to mine and um, try to give me and my wife a great life. And the question is, how do I make my channel stand out over others and make better quality videos? So the very first thing, um, of course, when it comes to making better quality videos is looking to see what everybody else is doing and you know getting your stuff to you know that level. Um, of course, everybody's gonna interpret quality differently. You have like the technical quality in terms of like your camera optics, your audio quality, the editing, you know, the style if you're editing all that and and then you have viewer perceived quality which is does somebody come into the content and enjoy it yes or no and it, does that happen at scale at a competitive level yes or no so that's you know how you make sure that you are competitive in your space um but when it comes to standing out um I'm not sure if your wife's part of the content or not, but like, you know, you or you guys, they like, you are gonna be like the core thing that helps you stand out. But in addition to that, trying to come up with different themes that other people are not doing is something that can also help you stand out. So for example, if everybody's doing like let's plays and guides and you know, those sorts of things, then in that case, you could be doing like, you know, um, this isn't really playing the game. This is just making videos about the game where you are, you know, um, like, you know, jumping off of something a hundred times 
times in the game or you are seeing like how exactly how high you can jump from before um you know before it hurts the character you know something like that um but you know you start doing you know just different themes than what everybody else is doing um and one really easy thing that you can do here is you can look across different gaming genres um you know people that cover different games and just see like what are some things that they're doing in call of duty that they're not necessarily doing in like this zombie game or what are some things they're doing in fortnite that they're not doing this in this you know zombie game and then start applying some of that stuff to the uh to the zombie game if you don't have your own original ideas and then from there you know try to um you know stem off of that and try to come up with you know some more uh some more unique stuff but standing out on YouTube is, is pretty easy. So, you know, like, um, you know, th that's going to come down to like your style in terms of how you're making the content. It's going to come down to the themes that you have on your channel. And then it's going to come down to your personality. Since everybody has, you know, wildly different personalities just as human beings, um, you know, that by itself is going to be something that's going to, uh, you know, make a big difference. And of course, if you're great at the game, then that's also going to be something that's going to make a big difference as well. Because, you know, if you're like, if you're like, hey, you know, I'm trying to grow this channel, but I'm really bad at the game, then in that case, you know, um, you know, that, that may not be as interesting unless you make being bad at the game a part of the thing right um then in that case you know it might be more interesting to people but that's where you do more mess up stuff like hey, i'm just gonna see how many times i can fall off of this before it hurts me and those types of things one thing roberto blake here um says is that uh, quality equals personality performance and production personality is style structure and storytelling production is audio video lighting performance is confidence communication and connection love that roberto thank you for adding that so next up, we have uh, Pixie Dust Traveler. Pixie Dust Traveler has been on YouTube for one year or more. They do travel content. The goal of the channel is to provide a resource for viewers to check out locations and reviews on places before they visit, hopefully one day for it to be my full-time job. And the question is, after uploading long-form content, how long should you wait to upload a short for that video? My analytics tell me that shorts drive viewers to my channel like 90%. In that case, go ahead and upload it. Like, you know, when you upload the video, um, so when you upload a video to YouTube and when you upload a short to YouTube, um, so the short will compete with the video a little bit on like home pages and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of the shorts feed, um, like that goes out to a totally different, you know, um, uh, you know, group of people. So because of that, um, publish your video, give it a little bit of time, you know, in terms of like maybe a few hours or maybe even the next day and then publish that, um, that short to promote it. But what I recommend that you do is, um, is, is experience with it so try doing one like right after you publish and just see what happens and then um, do another one that's you know maybe like 12 hours later because then maybe you hit like a different demographic for it and then um, do another one that is uh, you know just a temporary demographic because long term you'll hit everybody um, and then uh, do another one that's about 24 hours later and just see if you notice something that works better and then when you do then just try testing it a few more times just to confirm that that's a consistent result not just like a, a one-off hey Ed how you doing man What's up, Ed? Hope you're doing great. Next up, we got Nathaniel Robinson. Nathaniel Robinson does daily content. Um, the type of channel is vlog content. The goal is to show the world his incredible family. And the question is, hello, D and Nick. On my channel, I do uh, videos and vlogs with my amazing family. My question is, how do you convince people to click and watch the videos and in turn subscribe to the channel? D, go. Hold on. I just want to say that I... Oh, uh, you still on the roller coaster thing? No. Oh, no okay. No. I thought you were gonna say, all right. I just gotta say, I, I was in there watching roller coaster videos, yeah, and I'm yeah, like, I'm I took, I took a break, and I was going down the roller coaster game rabbit hole. <laughs> no, I was gonna say that I just think it's at, like amazing that people make videos about their amazing family. Yeah. Like, yeah I me too. Never make a video about you. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. I know you wouldn't. <laughs> like, yeah. Like. Right. Yeah. I would never make a video about you. I would make videos about you. <sighs> <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, well, I, I'm just Love giving it. a hard time. Love it. I would. I'd make a full documentary about you, D. I would. I'd make and a... you wouldn't even make a short about me. No, I would. <laughs> I would. I, I, I oh, would. Oh, love it. I, I would. I would make a short about <laughs> hey, This is so my brother, Nick. That's it. That's, that's it. That's short. That's yeah. the short. This is my brother, yeah. Nick. So yeah. what, what was the it question? Probably get more views than my documentary. Yeah, what was the question? So I don't know how to make a documentary. Yeah. Um, says um, uh, they do videos and vlogs with their amazing family. Um, yeah. The question is, how do you convince people to click and watch the videos and in turn subscribe to the channel? How do you get them to click? So you're going to get them to click by the idea of the video, right? Through the idea of the video, the title of the video, and the thumbnail of the video. That's how you get people to click, and it has to be something that interests them. You need to figure out why people want to watch your videos in the first place. What is your current, you know, what is anybody watching your videos for? Are you doing challenges? Are you traveling? Are you trying to teach people how to travel with your family? So getting them to click is about the idea and about the packaging. 
once they get into it, it's going to be on how you can communicate, how you can show fun, how it, you know, whatever it is you're trying to effectively do in your video. Are you teaching them how to do something with their family? Are you having fun? Are you going on vacations? So whatever it is that you're doing, make it entertaining, make it valuable in one way or another, and work on your editing to keep them interested. And in terms of subscribing, of all the things that you're trying to do, I would put subscribing at the end of the list in terms of priorities. You know, getting them to getting them to click, getting them to stop scrolling and getting them to click. Hey Heidi. It's gonna be like the best thing you can do right now. Coming up learning how to come up with the right concepts, the right ideas in the first place for your family. Focus on that. Getting them to subscribe. People are gonna come on board if they're interested in what they're doing, you know, interested in what you're doing. But just asking them, asking them to subscribe or put a graphic on the screen reminding people to subscribe. But I would say if you're gonna tell people to subscribe, ask them to subscribe or do anything give them something first don't start your video hey we're the whatever don't forget to like and subscribe and do all the stuff like come in with the video make it entertaining give them something to talk about or, or make them laugh or something then remind them to subscribe give them a little bit of value then ask them to do something instead and, and really quick if you don't mind like yeah, i'd like yeah, to yeah. i'd like to hop on that value hop piece on that value piece so like one big problem that a lot of family channels have is they want to make family videos and then they want people to like them. Right. Um, instead of that, like D was talking about on the value side, what you want to think about is like, okay, we're making videos about our family, but we're making videos for yes. other people. Right. So because of that, you want to make sure that, you know, in terms of like topically, that it makes sense for somebody to watch. You want to make sure in terms of the experience people are having, yeah. that they don't feel like they're just watching, you know, you know how it is. You've been there where it's <laughs> like, you know, you go over to somebody's house and like, hey, we went on this vacation. Check out these videos that we made. And you're like, oh, God. Yeah, and you're like, that's exactly your, what it is. And you're looking at your watch like, okay, yeah, this is going to be great. And you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Looks like you guys had a good time. But yeah. but really, well, you're, like, uh, yeah, you're like, yeah, you're like, oh, man, you know, I you can't know, wait till this is over. Drivers are going to be on the road. So right. Better get out of here. here. Right. Yeah. So like, you know, you have, you know, that whole thing. But like when you are like, okay, we're, we're, we're entertaining other people here with this content. Yeah. So because of that, we need to design everything that we're doing around that experience that others are having while they're interacting with us. Yeah. I, I think of, I think of family vlogging channels a lot of people getting started with that just like you were talking about right come over and watch our videos or everybody who's been on facebook has at least one friend at least one who's constantly posting photos of their kids mm -hmm. and you're just and you think and you're lying if you don't think this you think <laughs> i don't care about your kid right i don't care about your kid <sighs> or maybe that's just me yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe it is no, but you know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah, like, yeah 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 like you don't care just like here's just random pictures of my kid right. oh here's little joey yeah and you can unfollow kid. those people by the way yeah i yeah, know yeah, yeah, oh yeah, i know yeah, i know yeah, you can know, but i'm just yeah. saying like oh here's little joey Actually, you're not even on facebook anymore and, right. you've unfollowed facebook right <laughs> yeah right. you're like you know what not even participating right yeah but, but the idea is people are just showing this stuff and it's just like not of any value to you whatsoever and you're not interested yeah and i think the mistake that a lot of family vlog channels have is they're trying to document just like what's going on with their family and that's cool yeah and you can but, do that. And, you just have right. to make it for other people. Right. Yeah. That's cool. About you for other people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and it's really cool to do, but you have to find a way to get your audience to be invested in what your family's doing. Otherwise, it turns into that exact situation where people are like, I don't care what your family's doing. Right. That's not interesting to me. Or they just won't click on it. Or they just won't click on it. Yeah. Right. They'll click on it once, and then they'll be like, oh, okay, won't click on that anymore. Yeah. So you really, you know, I, I would watch successful family channels and see what they're doing. Look at the topics, look at how they're packaging everything up with the thumbnails and the titles. Look at their look at their editing. Look at how they shoot the videos. Look at the pacing of the videos because they've obviously figured out what works. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you, but they figured out at least how it works for their family. So I would look at the ones that are most successful and try to uh, try to reverse engineer why they're doing well. Yeah, and also like try to define it for yourself too. Like, you know, when you're putting something together, think to yourself like okay like why would somebody want to watch through this like yeah it's my family and they're amazing but why why would why would a total stranger right. be interested in what it is that we're doing like what is like what are we right. featuring that is you know you know interesting enough that you know that people will want to you know um come in and participate yeah and it's the same thing with vloggers in general right like i'm not just pouncing on on family channels here but just vloggers in general yeah like oh, i'm going to you know home whatever home depot today or like i don't care like give me a reason to be care that you're going to whatever right like you, you have to find a reason to do it for yourself but you have to give me a reason to want to care about what you're doing at right. the same time right and that's tricky that's really tricky and that's why so many people struggle 
uh, to succeed with those channels. Tommy T's Extreme Roller Coaster, thank you for the super chat. Super says, um, so you guys said, uh, would a 15 second intro be the uh, best for a coaster video? Um, I would just try to get people into the actual content for the long form video, but yeah, for don't the- ever, Don't ever think that. Yeah, for the uh, uh, for the shorts though, yeah, same exact thing there. Like I would just try to get them into the actual content. Like I would, yeah. I wouldn't worry too much about intros um, outside of you know just letting people know what they're getting ready to experience. If there is some type of build up that you can do, um, if it's like, hey, I don't say anything in these videos, and basically it just comes on, and then they go through that process. Um, then in that particular case, there's not a ton of uh you know uh additional you know stuff that you can add to that if you're not going to do voice on it um but you know i would just get them into the actual you know into the actual content itself another thing i would experiment with too um if you are taking people on the rides is um you know like okay like look in your audience retention and you should see across your videos like parts that people jump to or parts that people skip things like that and that might also give you a good lead on you know one shorts to make yeah. but two it could also give you a good lead on the things to keep and the things to exclude from the videos and it could also give you a good lead on if you're building something then like hey if these are the things that people are kind of skipping to and looking for then let me make sure i'm building more of that into into the builds that i do um uh, when i'm putting everything together yeah roberto says tommy watch mr beast gaming channel for examples of a good intro for you i mean they've got that dialed in again i don't know who your audience is right mr Beast pleasure. appeals to a certain demographic but look at the channels that are succeeding. Yeah. That, 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 you know, look at the channels that are succeeding and try to think like a viewer and then try to figure out, okay, if I'm thinking like a viewer, then, you know, this is how they're succeeding on the platform. What are they doing? And as a viewer, how is that attractive to me? And then just try to figure that out. Mm -hmm. So um, next up on our list here, we got Nobu Masuka. Like I, I, I apologize if I'm saying that incorrectly. Like what I watched you what you were doing. What? Like when I got started. You what? Like I watched what you oh, were doing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into... You were here doing it with me well, when I you know, getting but started. Like, yeah, yeah. get into videos. I was like, okay, yeah. well, who's who's making edit, you know, some sort of education content when it comes to... It doesn't matter what it is. Just who's doing education content? And I just started looking around. I was looking at how you're doing it. I was looking at how Roberta was doing it. I was looking at how Brian G. Johnson was doing it. I was mm -hmm. looking at how Daryl Eves was doing it, and Tim Schmoyer, and Sean mm -hmm. Gannel. I was looking at all the people doing these things. I was like, okay, here's, okay, their cadence is like this. Their pacing is like this. Their editing is like this just to give me an idea okay they're incredibly are, handsome they're incredibly yeah. handsome uh yeah and i would just think uh you know this is working for them hmm. what are they doing what are they all doing and it, that's working and i just started like reverse engineering that stuff yeah. okay this is they're doing this they're editing this much they're cutting this much they're cadence, you know they're pacing their speed and then i just start testing that stuff out boom people who are succeeding are usually succeeding for a reason right they figured it out right uh, next up, we've got personal, uh, sorry, uh, we've got uh, Nobu M Misukiwa, I apologize if I'm saying that incorrectly, says uh, they do personal finance content, the goal of the channel is to drive traffic to my course offers, and the question is, is there any benefit to making old videos private that are not related to your new content? My current content is for first time home buyers, old content is credit repair, my old credit repair vids still get tons of views and are my highest viewed videos in the last 28 days, even though I haven't made any vids on that topic in a while, my newer home buying vids are on a struggle bus. So yeah, so that can happen. So basically what's happening is like, let's say somebody comes and they watch, <clears throat> they watch one of those videos that are unrelated to the new content that's bringing in all the traffic. Then YouTube shows them some of your new content when you publish it because those people have recently interacted with your channel and enjoyed that content. That's why people keep getting, or that's why you keep getting views on it because people enjoy it. And YouTube tests your content against them and then they don't respond to it, which basically sends the signals to YouTube, at least temporarily, that the people that they're showing it to that are most engaged in your channel right now are just not interested in that content. So because of that, I would actually take a different approach because you have something that's working already and it's bringing people in. I would actually, if it was me, I would start from scratch. Um, and I know that kind of sucks to hear, but if I was going to build a personal finance channel, but then I have this other stuff, you know, that that isn't, you know, really related. I mean, I guess it technically is. Um, you're just talking about a different, you know, topic within personal finance, which is, you know, buying homes. Um, if you plan to do more general personal finance stuff in the future, that that traffic would still be able to, you know, um, uh, match the audience of the new content, then in that case, it would make sense to keep it on the channel. But if you're just going into like teaching people about real estate, then in that particular case, you know, making something from the ground up might be the better uh, approach there. If it was me, you know, that that's what I would consider there. Yes. Next up. 
We've got yarning for a smile. Yarning from a smile is, um, let's see here, knitting and crochet, fiber arts, and more podcasts. The goal of the channel is to inspire and enable others to create daily and to provide money to cover materials for my content. Question is, how can I encourage super stickers for my niche without breaking lottery laws? A lot of my niche um, do lottery style giveaways to get people to do super chats, etc. They put their names in a bucket and draw a prize, but I'm in a state where lotteries are illegal. I've got one for you that's going to bake your noodle, as bake they would say in the as they would say in uh, the the Matrix movie. Bake it. I'm afraid to say the word Matrix now because there's been all this like weird stuff attached to the word. Oh, so like goodness. I'm afraid to even say it, even in reference to the movie, because right. I'm like uh, people are going to think I'm a scumbag just for I, saying like Matrix. I. But I, I was just making a, a, a movie reference, by the way. I can't. I I I, I think the original Matrix is amazing, and yeah. I hate that that's been connected to like this whole other thing. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you which side of that fence you're on. I yeah. just don't like that you can't discuss that movie online yeah. without some people taking that taking it to mean something else. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, yeah, that's crazy. not what I meant. Like I literally right. mean the movie. Right. Like that was a great scene. Yeah. Like I don't mean like, you know, that. not talking about the simulation that we're living in. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's controlled by government alien you're overlords. Yeah, right. You're Reti- reptilian overlords. Right. Yeah. You're weirdos. The but system. anyway, yeah. Uh, but anyway, the um, uh, the thing with the lottery, like the thing that's going to bake your noodles is or bake your noodle in, in this particular case is um, technically um, if they are giving prizes away, then just the giveaway rules in general is something they need to declare. But if they are giving those prizes away in exchange for engagement on their YouTube channels, then technically depending on how they're doing it, it's possible that they might actually be violating the terms of, or the community guidelines of YouTube yeah. um, around incentivized engagement. So um, because of that, just be mindful there. Um, you know, like when you are, um, you know, when you're giving people things in exchange for engagement, um, if it's a, you know, prize or something, then in that case, you know, it can get you, you know, in, you know, into, into trouble there in terms of the community guidelines. And you're already doing something risky there, just doing lottery stuff in general on YouTube. Um, but you just be super careful with that as it relates to engagement. So for example, um, if you're going to do giveaways, you can do giveaways, you can offer that kind of stuff, but you cannot say like, okay, first you got to be a subscriber of my YouTube channel. As soon as you say that, then you're, then you're violating things technically. How often YouTube enforces that, I have no idea. But, you know, just like I said earlier in the stream, I try to play things safe because we put tons of work into, you know, the content that we make. So you want to make sure that, you know, you are going to have it for a while. So um, so because of that, I would definitely, if you go to Google right now, I'll actually do it for you real quick and drop it in the chat. Um, let's see here. I'm going to send you a link right here. And this particular link is going to give you information. Chantel, Chantel dropped a link. Oh, she already got it. Thank yeah. you, Chantel. For giveaways. Thank yeah. you. So she just dropped that in there. Um, that's going to give you more information on the giveaways themselves. In terms of the state, um, you know that, that you are living in and violating their local laws. So even though YouTube is an international platform, um, you still do have to comply with like your local laws because that's where you're actually you know publishing the content from. Um, so because of that, if it's going to break your local laws, then in that particular case, um, you should find another type of content to uh, to do. Roberto says. <laughs> If, yeah, that's their problem. If, if yeah. people want to take you out of context, that's their problem. But we're, but we're also living in the Matrix Skynet collab with Minority Report, Enemy of the State, <laughs> Fight Club. I love it. Yeah. Oh, so good. <laughs> so uh, right. next up on the list here, oh, we've got uh, Yarning. Oh, we did that one already, I think. Yarning for a smile, unless they put that one in twice. Oh, yeah, yeah they you did. You know what's so crazy so about what he just said? is Minority Report is just a phenomenal movie. Yeah. And it's so far-fetched that you're like, that could never be true. But now some of that stuff is like the technologies that they're coming up yeah, with. It's and like, how whoa. It's yeah. like, well, yeah. I mean, they don't yeah, have they to can pre- just figure out time. They don't then, have the precogs yeah. or right, anything like right. that. But yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it is. I, I love how movies, no matter how far-fetched they are, to some degree end up influencing science. Right, right. That's, that's because, that. yeah, because smart people see that and they're like, wow, I wonder if I could make something like that. that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, cool. I wonder if I could take out Tom Cruise's eyeballs and replace them. Right, right, with probably. Nick, with Nick Nimmin's eyeballs. Probably, right? Probably, yeah. yeah. He'd probably stop getting movies at that point, yeah, but would. you know, he would. yeah. So Absurd World Facts is our next question here. Um, they uh, do fam- fact and history content. The goal of the channel is that I'm a newbie for now, so my focus is to entertain the viewer and learn until one day you get monetized. And the question is, how important is it to add country and setting? 
can it affect negatively in the channel if I add it? I'm from a small UN, uh, European country, no English speaking, and most of my views are from the USA. No, you're fine. So, um, so adding the country to your channel is perfectly okay. Um, and if you add, you know, uh, like if you're, you know, over there, then you're fine. Um, if people from the USA are already responding to your content, people from the USA will continue to see your content. We'll continue to see your content. You're fine. Uh, Roberto says the AI are the pre-cogs. Are the precogs. Yeah. Oh man. AI is the precogs yeah. now. There you go. Next up. Yeah, man, we're going into crazy. T- Here, yeah, dude, I'll it's just, gonna be it's it's gonna be a really interesting next like decade. like like yeah, yeah next I, decade. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty incredible. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm just gonna put this out there. The yeah, the next decade of our lives with yeah. everything that's happening with AI and, and just how everything is just like I mean, it's everything is advancing at a speed that I, I can barely keep up with. Just read the news. Yeah. The next 10 years is going to be, it's either going to be amazing or we are going to mess everything up. Right. <laughs> like, it's gonna, yeah, we're, we're going to break everything or it's going to be incredible. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how it turns out. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, you know, because all, all we can do is watch the show and participate, right? That's it. <laughs> right. So, like, yeah. what's going to happen is going to happen. So, we just get yeah. to, you know, participate and watch. Yeah. But the... Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm just interesting to see like where all the AI stuff goes with all the tension in the world right now with like all the people against like everything, you know? Yeah. People yeah. Against it's just, everything. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's just yeah. a really interesting, it, uh, you know, really interesting. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter what side of the thing you're on. Right. Somebody's like, they're outraged. About right. It. Right. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter what side you're still. Yeah. yeah everybody's outraged about something. Yeah, it's crazy. crazy. Absolutely yeah. crazy. It, and it's such a problem that they have terms like doom scrolling, where yeah. people are just like, you know, just finding all that like negative content to spend all day just looking at yeah. like all this stuff about, you know, horrible things that are happening in the world and predictions of people saying things are going to happen. And yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's Absolutely nice. crazy. Yeah, Neuralink, totally min- minority oh. report stuff. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Um, so, okay, so let's go uh, and do the next question here. So um, we've got um, Adrian Dixon Fitness says they do daily content. Um, they do fitness content. Um, the goal of the channel is to make DNM and money. You see that, D? That's the goal of their channel is to make you money. Um, the question is, how do you stand out in such a saturated space like fitness on YouTube? I post workouts and shorts um, and just end up at the bottom of the pile. So uh, when it comes to, uh, and I'll give, I'll give D like, uh, like 10 bot when the show is over um, so that he can, you know, make money from this question. Yeah. But the, uh, um, the thing that you can do to stand out is, um, you know, if everybody has big, long intros, get to the point faster. Um, if people are focused on, you know, um, uh, you know, like an individual, you know, like, hey, today we're doing arms, this day we're doing legs, this day we're doing stomach, whatever, and they're focused on just, you know, those things, then you can put it together in a more organized way so that people can go into a playlist and they can learn things, you know, at in like kind of like a course structure instead of it just being like a bunch of random videos that are put up on the YouTube channel. Um, you know, you can do that type of thing. You can be hyper engaged with your audience. So a good example of this is like, you know, since you watch my videos, there's a really good chance you probably watch Nate over at Channel Makers as well. Um, and one of the cool things that I really like about Nate is, um, is, is how much he involves the viewers and what it is that he's doing. So like, he'll ask, you know, um, he'll ask people that are watching his content to like, you know, Hey, upload thumbnails into this with your titles and things like that. And he goes through and like analyzes it. And then he'll like showcase, you know, the, the best ones and give, you know, information on what he's analyzed and things like that. But he does like a lot of back and forth with viewers. And I think that's really cool. But like, um, one of the things that you can do in your particular case is something like that, right. To where it's like, you know, Hey, I'm going to be super involved with my community, like to the point to where it's almost like obnoxiously involved. I'm not saying Nate is obnoxiously involved, but I'm saying like, you can take it to that level if you want, um, to where it's like, I'm really involved with this and I'm doing everything I can to actually, you know, help people. People out here. What, what is the fitness that, channel about specifically? That that can look like it just says fitness. That can look like something like uh, like hey, once a month um, I pick one person out of my community, um, and that one person I basically coach that person and I help that person you know reach a particular goal within that thirty days. And then over time, you know, of course you keep those interactions going and you, you know, give in like, you know, Hey, here's a three month checkup on this person or a six month checkup on this person that, you know, that I worked with, you know, uh, you know, when I first started my channel or whatever the thing is doing those types of things, um, can, you know, can help you stand out because people are like, Oh wow. They're like, you know, getting involved here and they're actually like helping people, you know, you know, fix some of these, you know, some of these problems and get themselves together. So, you know, doing little things like that and just getting creative, you know, come up with other, a bunch of other things like that, um, you know, can, can, can help you stand out with what it is that you're doing. Yeah. I, I want to add to that. So 
if you've got a fitness channel, like when somebody says fitness channel, like that just sounds so broad. Mm -hmm. And I think a broad fitness channel, while it's not impossible, I think you've got your work cut out for you. I think if you can focus on a particular demographic, like fitness over 40. Yeah. Yeah. Fitness for men over 40 Mm -hmm. or something like that. I, there was, I I forget his name because I haven't, I got rid of TikTok, but there was a guy. Fitness for travelers. You, you know somebody that did that one too. Yeah. 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 Fitness for travelers. Um, there was a guy that was watching um, during during the pandemic. He was on TikTok, and he was doing specifically um, fitness for men over fifties, and that was that was TikTok. And he had a very rough. I think it was Darren or something like that. And he has like a very, you know, he's rough. He shoots it straight. You know, he shoots it straight. He, there's no sugarcoating it with his content. And he would focus on men over 50s, and he would just talk about things that they could do, talk about their diet, talk about if everything that's important for men over 50s. And then he, once he kind of built up his audience that way, because I was also paying attention, he was growing really fast. And he started doing things like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm choosing three men to work with. Like, you know, if you, if you want, like, personal, you know, device or whatever, hit me up. So he started, like, building up his stuff that way. The guy exploded on, on TikTok. But it was very, it was laser focused, targeted a certain group. Once you got to a certain size, he started like just picking people out, like you were talking about. I'll work with you privately, and uh, yeah, it was just, uh, it was really good. Yeah, it other really things good. too is like it's targeted. Um, it was just super targeted. Yeah, other things too is um, uh, I've lost my train of thought. Never mind. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you know, those are the types of things that you can do to uh, to, to to stand out. Yeah. So um, next up, uh, we've got. Uh, so you're not yet decided is the name of the channel. They have been on YouTube for less than six months. Um, the channel they have is chat and various content. The goal of the channel is to engage with more uh, with more of an audience and have fun. The question is, the question is, um, how to make a YouTube channel more interesting? If it's just a chat between a few friends on various topics, the conversation's got to be good. Like yeah. just for starting out, the conversation's got to be good. Um, I plan to produce content with many different concepts on my channel. Should I create separate channel and audience for each content, or should I produce them all in one channel? So the idea when it comes to, uh, you know, niching down on YouTube, a lot of people look at it as like a restriction of content. Um, But in reality, niching down on YouTube is more about um, targeting a very specific type of viewer and making all of the content on your channel a perfect fit for that particular type of viewer. So some people will isolate this down to a single person and they'll give that person a name, right? So they'll say like, you know, okay, John is the person that I'm making content for. John is a, you know, male um, that is, you know, uh, 42 years old. Um, John is interested in, uh, let's hear, what are you doing here real quick? You're doing uh, just various content. Okay, so John is a male, 42 years old. He uh, likes to listen listen to podcasts while he's on his break at work. Um, uh, uh, John has a income, um, let's say like a middle class, you know, income. And uh, he has, he's a single guy. And, um, you know, because of that, like when you start breaking all these things down for that target person, then that's where you start like pushing everything through that filter of that person, right? So then you're like, okay, well, we're gonna talk about, you know, these particular topics, but are these topics things that John would listen to at lunch? Um, Is this thing that this 42 year old person would listen to at lunch? Um, Like, are we talking about like, you know, uh, kids video games here? Or are we talking about, uh, you know, something that, you know, 42 year old would be more interested in? Um, Are we talking, you know, instead of talking a lot about family, since I am trying to, you know, reach John, who is a single, you know, guy, then in that particular case, I'm not even going to mention family in my content because that's not who I'm trying to resonate with. I'm trying to resonate with single people like John, right? So when you, you know, break things down in that way, then all you have to do is start thinking like, okay, if I publish this video, would John love this video? Or if we make this video, would John love it? If we have this conversation, would John love it? So like when you figure out who it is that you're after um, in terms of, you know, that your target viewer, then everything else becomes a lot more clear and the job becomes a lot easier because then all you have to do is just think to yourself like, okay, does it meet this criteria? And are we doing these things that would be of interest to that person? Um, But just a couple things to think about is variety channels on YouTube are very difficult um, to grow um, in terms of like trying to reach a bunch of different kinds of people. The typical rule of thumb there, John Riggs says, I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah, John, you're my, you're my, you're my person, John uh because the name the avatar yeah yeah. but uh uh when it comes when it comes to uh you know the conversations that you're having and things like that um the best thing you can do is just make everything um for john and then put everything else on another channel because variety channels these days on youtube are very difficult to grow you can but they're it's it's just a much bigger mountain you're gonna have to climb um compared to making content for john 
who listens to podcast at work and is 42 years old um, and doesn't have any uh, any friends and likes to watch, you know, um, NFL on Sundays is how he likes to spend his days. So um, or likes how he spends his weekends. So, um, you know, I, I just recommend that you get clear on that and who it is that you're making the content for. And then from there, you know, build everything out from there for that person. So on that note, I want to thank everybody for hanging out in the stream today. Um, I do want to let you know that um, here in about an hour, Daryl Eves is going to be going live on his YouTube channel. Um, if you're not familiar with Daryl, um, Daryl is, uh, he's like an OG here in the YouTube space. He works with some of the biggest creators on the platform. He is the, um, partnered with Mr. Beast on, um, and Sean Duras on Vid Summit. Um, so in terms of his wealth of YouTube knowledge, like he knows it inside and out. In addition to that, he's got like 20 something gold play buttons himself from his own channels and channels channels that he you know works with um, so the the knowledge that he has is pretty substantial and his approach to everything is is pretty you know intense as well um, but I'm as soon as I hit the end button on here it's gonna go ahead and default you over to his stream so um, what you want to do there because it doesn't start for an hour is just click the button to remind you and then when he goes live I really recommend that you check it out because every live stream of his that you watch it'll you know it, it'll give you tons of insight on like what's important and things you need to focus on and things like that um, it's a different vibe like here we do like the Q&A where we answer your questions there. He's interviewing um, one of his students that has had, you know, success that have transformed their channel in some way to where they started. And it was kind of like not doing that great or they hit a plateau of some kind. And then, you know, he got them past it and they talk about all the things that they did to do that. So it's really interesting content. It'll really add tons of value to you, you know, as a content creator. Um, so um, make sure that you check that out. And again, you're going to just directly go over there as soon as I hit the end button here on the stream. But in addition to that, if you're a new content creator, I just want to remind you that, um, you know, right now you might be looking at YouTube like, man, I got all this stuff I got to learn. And, you know, it might take me a while to get, you know, all this stuff in place and all that. It might. However, keep in mind that it's just a learning curve that you have to go through, just like everything else that, you know, YouTube is more based on like, you know, the processes of doing things and the understanding of what it is that you're doing and your skill sets involved in doing those things. Like that's what most of the success on YouTube comes down to. So just focus most of your efforts on your skill sets and on your understanding of just how to interpret what you're seeing in your analytics and how YouTube works and, you know, all those things um, and you'll be fine. So um, have an amazing rest of your weekend. D, another Awesome stream. And um, yeah, everybody have a great rest of your weekend. Roberto, thanks for hanging out in the stream today. Uh, Renee also, thanks for hanging out. And everybody else, you know, that hung out in the stream um, for, you know, most of the duration of the stream today. Thank you as well. Have a great rest of your weekend. And um, we'll see you next Saturday. Yep. Cheers. Oh, and I got links in the description. A bunch of helpful stuff. Check them out.